Welcome to the FanCast, Episode 9, where we discuss everything world-class bullshitters for Episode 83 and accompanying videos. On tonight's podcast, we have, returning all the way from Nueva York, Liquid Metal Pro. I want to clear up one thing before we continue. I thought that cop was a prostitute. <laughs> Coming from his one-bedroom efficiency somewhere in the U.S. of A., reality's frank. I'm sorry, could you speak up? I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> and from the heartland where it's 8,000 degrees, Kendo Slice. What's, uh, what's, uh, or, yeah, how are, how is a priest and a uh, silver medalist similar? Uh, they both came in a little behind. Uh, oh. uh. <laughs> and joining us tonight... Despite his better judgment, is Justin B. Swiggity Swooty, I'm here for that booty. There you go. There we go. Very nice. You'll fit right in. All right. So let's get started with some news and get it out of the way. Uh, does anybody have a little bit of culture, pop culture news that we didn't get a chance to cover last night? No? I'll go. Nope. Uh, so uh, Sam Shepard died this past week, age of 73. He portrayed Chuck Yeager in The Right Stuff, and uh, actor and playwright and so forth, and apparently no one cares. Am I right? Mm, yeah. yeah, you'd be correct. Yeah. So we also had a action movie came out with, uh, led by a female, where she's beaten up on guys twice her weight and then some. Uh, we have uh, Charlize Theron playing... An atomic blonde, and it opened to four hundred million dollars. Hmm. No, I lied. It's almost made back its budget, but not quite. It's only a thirty million dollar budget, so that ought to tell you how well it's going. Oh. So, uh, does anybody? I guess. Yeah, I guess that no one cares. All right, that's moving on then. No, sadly, I have no intention of watching it. So. I'm still kind of hungover. Yeah, I noticed. Well, get the hair of the dog going. Maybe you need to drink some more. I don't know. I I I went through that entire twelve pack yesterday. Frank, you weren't supposed like... to answer. What? Huh? <laughs> huh? We'll get to him later. All yeah. right, cool. Yeah. Man, you guys are really we're so. Being, we're so... being distracted. You're being distracted. Yeah, quit. Type it in the chat and the Facebook page. This is annoying. Super uh, Troopers 2. Filming has wrapped up. Is anyone excited about that? Kinda. I was more looking forward to the sequel to Beer Fest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if they, it depends. If it's actually like a second Beer Fest, like where they have to like defend their title or something like that, and then they can no, lose... They, at the, the end of the movie, they teased Coming Soon Weed Fest. Well, I know I saw that, but, but like I, was, I wanted to see that. I'm not sure if I want to see that though, because like while it could be good in theory, it could also just turn into like a really like dumb stoner movie, but not in a good way, like Cheech and Chong. So I don't know. Uh, it, those are good. I days. I yeah. just even I saw the like when I saw Peter Fest, I saw it in theaters, and like at the end of it, they they're like coming soon, Weed Fest, and I was just like, nah. I didn't think it was serious, but who knows? I am looking forward to Super Troopers 2, though. Bump is good. All right. Everybody's so quiet. Yeah. <laughs> kind of burnt out from last night. Are we, fucking, yeah, yeah, like, are we fucking recording this in a goddamn funeral home or what? Apparently we are. Well, it's New York City. Somebody's probably dead somewhere. So, yeah. What a dork. All right. <laughs> Are we adding Eddie or not? Yeah, we got to pick on somebody. Yeah. Sure. That's all right. This way, Justin have an opportunity to fucking lace into him because... Oh, and Liquid Metal Pro, because we already got that out of the way last night. All right. So... Is he online? I, yeah, I'll bring him in. But if he gets too dorky, I'm going to fucking drop him like it's so, hot. Wait, wait, wait. You're going to actually bring him in? Just for you, Liquid Metal Pro. Just for you, because of the type of mood that you're in. 
Hey, 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 hey. Raping mood. Straight if you heard otherwise. All right. Talk amongst yourselves. The topic is uh, douchebaggery and the douchebags that douchebag it. <laughs> um, oh, my favorite. <laughs> that's too many douchebags. I, I lost count. Douchebags. Well, we can All talk right. Pacific Rim delay. Pacific Rim 2 delay. Fitting. All right. Talk about the Pacific Rim job. Let's just go on the next topic. I don't feel hey, like have all this crap. Hello? Uh, hello. Pacific Rim 2 delay. What's your thoughts? I don't care. Me either. It's going to be a shit fest. Then why did you add, me? add it as a topic if you don't care? I because didn't. Because <laughs> it just recently happened and it is something to talk about. I just don't give a shit. All right. I, I mean, the first one was okay. It. The first one was okay. There's talk that it might tie into the Godzilla King Kong universe. Right. But so are they going to kiss this time be. or not? I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know if the monster universe is really... I don't know. It just feels like the, the expanded universe has been so beat up by Marvel that it just seems like everybody else is going to run out of gas by the third movie. Yep, it's getting tired. It's gotten yeah. tired. So like, let's just go God back to having, was... you know... Good movies and, I'm a, and not four yeah. blockbusters a year. Yeah, and I see. I'm a monster movie fan. I love Gojira. Oh, Gojira! Anytime you show a fucking monster destroying the Japanese, I'm all for it. <laughs> so, I I enjoy the Godzilla movies. I like King oh, yeah. Kong. Yep. The ori- I like the original King Kong, the one from the 70s. I only saw that like one time, and I was okay with it. Uh, hated the remake, and loved Kong Skull Island. So. The idea of, because, I mean, fucking Godzilla already is kind of its own, like, monster movie universe, because he's always fighting other monsters. Right. Yeah, definitely, since, like, so, Mothra and I I'm think another one would start in their own thing. Movie, yeah, the Japanese are going to kill him some monster that's trying to always do it. Yeah, so, I mean, there's already been a monster universe. The Japanese beat us to it, just like efficient cars. And <laughs> Sadly. they, it's... <sighs> I want. I would love that to happen, but it's already kind of happened. But there's some limitations because I mean, what are you gonna? You're gonna end up having to cross over way too much. I mean, I the idea of King Kong fighting Godzilla is fine. I've I've got the fucking King Kong versus Godzilla on Blu-ray. It's great. I watch it regularly, although I haven't watched it all in like a year. But that's not the point. The point is. I mean, were you going to like cross over and have like Mothra fighting King Kong or something like that? I don't know. It's all three of them. Mothra, Godzilla. Maybe, maybe you should fight Varen the Unbelievable. It's a triple threat match, Maggle. Ooh, tag team. Get four of them. There's Fatal four way. There's just nothing new they can bring to this except, you know, Royal Rumble. There's shitty CGI. There we go. We <laughs> could. <laughs> On next week's fan cast, we will book a Royal Rumble. Featuring all of our favorite monster movie monsters. Yes. All right. Question: Is there a height limit? Uh, <laughs> well, cons- considering this is a uh, very, very out of the box and uh, unusual topic, I'm going to say no, with an asterisk because I'm kind of curious as to who you're wanting to include. What? Because we're saying movie monsters, are we just keeping it? That's what I'm asking. Are we keeping it strictly like to kaiju monsters, like you know, big, uh, large monsters destroying cities type of thing, or like anything that's a movie monster? Well, give me an example, and I'll tell you. Ah, uh, damn! I just had one like so. Cloverfield versus Godzilla. Wait, who? That's what you're asking? <laughs> Wait, Cloverfield. who versus Godzilla? Cloverfield? Or, yeah, or, you know, we could do no, that because yeah. yeah. We we couldn't we could like include like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man the Blob oh that would be perfect <laughs> or that fucking singing plant from the uh, oh, little God. shop of horror <laughs> oh so yeah so like the little okay so that singing plant how big did he get uh grow uh, how big did he become like at the end big enough to fill uh, oh you know they're remaking that Little Shop of Horrors uh of they course they are anything if they're gonna remake it they should remake it as a porno and call it the Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> Uh, oh, That's... Rebel Wilson is rumored to be in it. Ugh. Ooh. Rebel Wilson. All right, where's the rope? I'm just going to end it now. No, Easy I'm there, not... Chester. Uh, yeah, Chester, no. Chester like is worth be, be careful there. So, I mean... <laughs> hey, I will be the one charged with the crime, not you guys. Uh, well, that's, just be- that's because you're Latino. You're automatically 
probably committing a crime of some sort. <laughs> God bless this country. So anyway, so <laughs> everyone, we, that's our that's our homework. Frank, start on it now, so that way you have seven full days to prepare, and then we can, we, we can come up jobs. with. We will come up with it in a few days or something along those lines. Stay tuned, folks, because we will figure this out. We'll discuss it off air. Okay. Uh, monster movies. I love them, but a mo- monster universe. Eh. Continue. Mm, I'm into it. It's the second best universe so far. Well, no. It's the only other good universe. Oh, uh, Actually, the universe yeah. you live in is probably the best one, and you should be thankful for that. Amen. Uh, okay. So, rumor has it, they're remaking Death Wish. Rumor? There's a trailer out already. All right. Rumor <laughs> like has it that there's a trailer Charles out for Death Bronson Wish. Charles Death Wish? Yes. God. Yeah, no. Fucking damn it. Son of... Ugh. That's all Hollywood Why can't does they just... is remake everything. <laughs> you know, as soon as Zemeckis dies, they're going to make they're gonna start shooting re- uh, Back to the Future re- reboot the next oh, day. Oh, shit. Did you hear that? Dude, did, did you hear that? Have a script oh, oh, oh. Before, before we go with this Shh, Death Wish thing. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Did you guys just hear that? As soon as he said that, I'm pretty sure I just heard Jeff Hicks cry out in terror all at once. Yeah. <laughs> I felt the disturbance. I could kind of hear him screaming, yeah, God damn There's a disturbance in the force. Yeah. It's as if Jeff Hicks cried out it's in terror. It's million of millions of voices cried out and were silent. <laughs> yes. It was, all, it was just Jeff. He's like, no, no, not a remake of the Back to the Future, which I agree with him. They should not remake it. Okay, so who are they having playing Charles Bronson? All right, so basically it's um, – Directed by it's going to be directed by Eli Roth of all people, and Bronson in this movie will be played by none other than Bruce Willis. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes no sense. It does. No, it doesn't. But I was expecting him to say something way fucking worse, like Jesse Eisenberg or something. Oh no! See, that's the reason. See, this is one of the things I wanted to talk about the trailer. I'm like, okay, Bruce Willis really uh, of all the people to. You know, select to play um, the character. Damn it! I always well, how the hell do I forget his name of all times now? But whatever. Of all the people to play Bronson's character, um, something Percy. Um, Bruce Willis. Okay, that's not as bad as it could have been because one, he's pretty much up there in the years. Right. And two, of the people that I would expect to shoot anybody of any ethnicity would be. Uh, Bruce Willis. So I'm okay, kind of okay with that. That's not really so much of an issue. He's proven he's willing to do it. Yeah, exactly. The, um, where I have the issue with, and this is where I have my concerns, is even by looking by the trailer, the trailer seems like it's going to try to remain faithful to an extent. Um, you know, the whole modernization of it. The thing is that Death Wish, the original Death Wish, aside from being a product of its time, was also one of those movies that was a social commentary um, in that it was addressing the ridiculous crime wave that was in the plague, especially in New York City in the 70s, um, I believe a little bit in the 80s. Again, I wasn't born in that era. I like everything I've heard about that era. I've heard from people older than me and they explained to me how terrible things were. And, you know, um, I don't know if you might know of any of like these cases, for example. Um, <laughs> I was going to say cut and for a second. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's that was two weeks ago. Sorry. It's been two weeks, but I was going to say, like, um, you had, like, all those examples of vigilantism and the rise of it as a result of the crime. And it's that's where I have my concern. Like, is the tr- is the remake going to miss the point of what the original movie was trying to say? Probably. It's just probably going to be fight scene, fight scene, shootout, fight scene, end movie. Oh, explosions. Sorry, forgot the explosions. It sounds like a Michael Bay movie. Well, it's Eli Roth, and if anything, Eli oh Roth... Oh, my God! Could. Yeah, that's where I have my concerns. I already know what Eli Roth does, and um, in terms of how Eli Roth feels towards a certain group of people, SEWs, he doesn't really like them. I believe he actually made a movie that was a response to them. It was a cannibal movie. I haven't watched it, um, because, again, it's like... It's kind of like when I saw Hostel. Once I saw the first one, I, the second was pretty much the same. I almost saw no difference. So uh, that's really where I have my concerns. And um, 
I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Because uh, I feel like this could potentially miss the entire point of it. And uh, I don't know. I, no I'm laughing a... for sure. I'm skipping it. Well, I'm sure it like he would be stars. a good choice to make this kind of movie. Like for that kind of tone as you know, not to kind of dumb it down and make it, you know, modernized to. Well, in terms of like the modernization of it, the way it looks, like judging by the trailer, it looks like they're still gonna use the um the original story to go with it. That basically um that he was one day, you know, his uh, his wife and daughter were alone in the house one day. Um, there's a home inva- invasion. The wife gets killed. The daughter gets raped. It looks like that's the format they're going with. Where it, one yeah, change that's that they what made, I kind of meant. Like, because if it was like probably anyone else, it would probably be like him, like the Charles Bronson character would be like a black guy shooting white people for some reason. Yeah, I mean, I did, I did rewatch the point. movie again. I did rewatch the movie just to be um, certain, maybe that he's staying faithful to it. And uh, um, I do remember that the and I was watching it. I was like, all right, the original three, um, the original three uh, gang members that you know basically broke into his house. Yeah, they it was Jeff Goldblum and two white dudes. So um, they had like three white guys in the trailer. So I'm like, all right, so it's not he's not trying to go out to make a racial thing. And then later you do see Bruce Willis go up to a bunch of gang members and just shoot them like brown people basically. So. I'm okay with him shooting um, the rest of my kind. I think we're far too many, but that's just that's just me. That's just me. Um, so I'm okay with the whole level of violence thing because again, the Death Wish movie was basically a revenge movie. That's all it really. I mean, it wasn't really just yep. that. There was more to it. But the whole point is that, especially now, we're in a and it, it's like the original was a product of its time. And if you watch the original, there's even some dialogue that kind of tells you where. You see the mindset of people was. Yeah, there was a there was a line in the movie where it's the guy says, uh, you know, it's awfully racist of this vigilante to target uh, blacks and um, and brown people. And this and then the lady says, what do you want to make? Uh, what do you want more white criminals so that we can even it out? So, you know, it was like it was a movie that was making a social commentary of the time, how people perceive crime, how people perceive the, uh, you know, corruption in the police department, how people perceived everything. It wasn't just like one thing. It was looking at the whole, um, the sum of the parts, not just one aspect and focusing on it. And that's where I have my concerns yeah. because I feel like, okay, we'll get the violence, we'll get the whole. And, oh, and, I, and knowing that it's Eli Roth, you know we're gonna get some over the top um, death scenes, which I already saw by the way. Like he has a scene where he kills the guy. Um, I think by having a car land on top of him while he's um, in the garage or something like that. So you know it's gotta be like over the top deaths, right? Oh, yeah. Whereas in, yep. in, you know, in Death Wish, very, I mean, yeah, Death Wish later on started having, like, over-the-top deaths, like those, like, deaths that are like, oh, shit, like, he shocked the guy to death, you know, electrocuted the guy to death, threw another guy in a vat of acid, um, the guy got basically made into chorizo in, um, in a grinder. Spicy. That's yeah. a spicy meatball. Oh, wrong accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love the death wish movies i i never knew that uh i knew if there was a four and five i never watched them i finally got around to watching them in the last couple years and oh my god I enjoy the hell of the entire franchise it's just good fun um but again my concerns are more with this the movie's original message and what it was trying to establish and what this movie's going to get at and i feel like it's going to lose the message people are and this is another thing i have a concern with um being that it's a remake you know, people are going to say, and it's like almost with everything now, how people suddenly become a fan of something. Yep. Just, just because it's out in theaters, just because it's the new popular thing. Um, like, I know people who, in fact, I even dated a few girls who, when I used to remember telling them about the Death Wish movies, or there was a commercial that they were going to show Death Wish on TV or something, they would flat out tell me how much they hated that movie because it showed depictions of rape. Despite the fact that that's the reason why the guy goes from being a very, from the very beginning, he was a pacifist. And then, you know, not only losing his wife, but seeing that the rape was so traumatized that his dog became catatonic, basically drove him to say, you know what, the police ain't doing anything about it. I got to do something about it on my own. That's how we got the badass that is Charles Bronson, ladies and gentlemen. 
Have you guys ever seen the Simpsons episode where it's like Charles Bronson as like uh, Andy Griffith? Yes. yes. <laughs> <He's>, oh. <laughs> that little scene where he walks in and he's just like, Don Knotts is like, says something. He's like, I did. And I killed him. And he's like, what? He's like, now, excuse me. I've got to go down to Emmett's fix it shop to fix Emmett. Fix and he starts like whistling and spinning his gun to walking <laughs> down the street. I like if, if I had a top 10 Simpsons moments, list that's easily on the list dude what about like two others that i can think of off the top of my head the one where um uh we're, we're seeing an aging charles bronson in death wish nine uh i wish i was dead yeah <laughs> <laughs> or uh bronsonville not branson but bronsonville. Yeah. and everybody looks like charles bronson <laughs> hey mom uh. how about some cookies uh, he was a great actor. He made a lot of good movies. I like Charles Bronson. Oh, yeah. They were giving a lot of his movies. Me and my mom used to watch. Um, we still kind of watch them, and uh, she enjoys the hell out of them. And um, I remember when she tells me stories of when she was uh, younger and she used to watch all these movies, you know. Again, this was like a rarity for her back then. Uh, she was always telling me about how old that guy is. And I told her, you know, he was making movies well, I think, into his 80s or 90s, I believe. I think Death Wish uh, 5 was one of his last movies. And that came out, I think, in the 90s, I believe. He died yeah. 2003. Yeah. yeah. And he started those in his early 50s, but Bruce Willis yep. is in his early 60s. So there was almost about a 10-year difference in the actors with this reboot. So... Yeah. Well, Bruce well, Willis can still kick ass. Yeah, so I I have some hope. Let's just hope that it actually is much better than, or at least if it's not going to be as great as the original, and I don't expect it to be, that at least it's doesn't get full of itself. Unwatchable. Yeah, I hope it doesn't become unwatchable. I I, I just really hope, um, and I hope it pisses people off. I really do. Like not in the sense like, oh, this is a terrible movie. Like we would watch a movie and say there's a terrible movie, piss us off. But, like, piss off people because, in the sense that, oh, he's killing people on screen. That's not right. Or, oh, why is his daughter getting raped or something like that? Like, I hope this movie goes that route where it's like, you know what? Fuck you. We're here to tell a story and why this guy is a badass. You know, where he, he wasn't just a badass one day. He was a nice family man. One day they fucked with him and he fucked back. Simple. Straight to the point. Badassery. Yep. Speak, um... And by the way, if you guys are ever interested, um, there is, well, the problem is that this is a Spanish movie, but it's uh, actually based on a Spanish story. Um, talk about a movie based on revenge. Like, you know, this is like the whole revenge thing and, you know, taking the law into your own hands. There was a story that, um, you know, Spanish people later got developed into novella and whatnot. It was called, uh, it's Spanish called Doña Barbara, basically translated to Lady Barbara which is a story where this lady and her boyfriend are just hanging out one day and they kill her boyfriend, they rape her, they leave her for dead. So what happens is that time transpires. She has a daughter during that, um, because of the uh, thing, but she gives up the daughter or something happens. It, it's not really clarified as much in the movie or the book. Uh, well, in the, in the movie, at least. It was a black and white Spanish movie. But what happens is that she meets a man upon her return and this man is kind of like the few people to stand up to her because she has this kind of legacy of being this hard woman, this cold, hard woman. And her point was to come back to tie up loose ends. And she kills all those men in vicious ways, man. Like, you ever you ever heard of that movie, I Spit on Your Grave? Yep. Oh, oh, I hate those movies. Think of, think of revenge like that. Surprised that's not being remade these oh. days for the... Uh, it, 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 was, it, was, it, was. it was remade, as well as yeah. Last House on the Left. Wow, lovely. Yeah, Last House on the Left remake sucks, man. And damn it, Wes Craven. They butchered yeah. a classic. No, well, Wes Craven made the original. Yeah, I know. That's that's why it bothers me because it's like the, I've, I've I had the original at home too. You yeah. never remake Wes Craven movies because Wes Craven is the bomb. He is the master of horror. Well, kind of. Mm, and say there are others that are up there too. Yeah, like George Romero. Well, now he's down there. Six <laughs> feet, six feet Remember down there. Romero. Romero was so awesome that he got made into a zombie in a in a game once. Yes, it was uh, Call of Duty Black Ops, I believe. 
Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. One of the one of the uh, DLC uh, zombie maps. I'm pretty sure it was like. Oh, Georgia. if it was if it was a DLC map, then I then that's why I didn't see it. Dude, and, it is uh, like one of the most awesome maps that you could play in that zombie series. And on top of that, he was yeah. one of. If anything, in terms of video game bosses, and I've played a lot of video games and faced a lot of video game bosses, it's one of the hardest motherfuckers to kill. Yeah, well, not even I, kill, just to stun him. Yeah, he he was he, he was epic in that game. I think we only beat him once. Shit, I remember actually having to um, like uh, during the days of uh, playing online, uh, having to meet um, like get random people online to say, hey, look, all right, so this is the strategy. This is what I'm gonna do. This is the weapon I'm gonna get. You get this weapon. And as soon as we're everything is good, hit him with everything you got. And it would take like four rounds to beat him because I just like it prog- he progressively got stronger. God. Yeah, Wes Craven doesn't have that legacy. He's not in a Call of Duty game. Well, but he did one make the, one of, some of the greatest stuff, like a Nightmare on Elm Street, New Nightmare, Scream. Love that. Yeah, yeah he's no. Right. He's no Joe Angie, that's for sure. <laughs> all right well i've said my uh, my word on this whole revenge fantasy thing yeah well yeah. we've heard a lot about your uh, fantasies lately and yeah. they're kind of scary <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well why don't you just continue on uh lmp with uh some kind of whatever it is you want to say about war on the planet of the apes oh yeah so speaking about uh planet of the rapes i mean apes <laughs> <laughs> There it is. Woohoo! Yep. <laughs> that was there. completely unplanned for. All right, that was completely unplanned. Uh-huh. Sure it was. Freudian slip. <laughs> yeah, it was a slip of the tongue, all right? Oh, uh, we don't want to hear that. Jesus. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. <sighs> Jesus. Is that all you wanted to say? No, that was basically it. I mean, okay. I just have my concerns about the movie, but I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna write, I'm not gonna like lose hope yet because I do have a feel. I I, I want to believe that. I want to believe. I want to believe. I want to believe that it's decent. Only I believe in Bo. Yeah, well, yeah, well you gotta <laughs> believe. Well, yeah. he's doing better with the Miz now, so. Yeah, even though he's dressed like a fucking homeless person. True. All right, moving on from wrestling because I think there's only like two or three of us here that half of us can talk about wrestling, the other half will just sit there and look dumb, so. <laughs> yeah. I don't so need no to look dumb. See us. All right, who has seen the video about Marvel firing the wrong people? I have. Because oh, their sales yeah. are going down yeah, in a spiral, and they don't get it. Yeah, it's like they're trying to do everything they can to fix the situation that they've created for themselves, and they have no idea how to fix it, and the way they're going about trying to fix it is not the correct way. Exactly. Which is far for the truth to this point. So, like, I haven't bought a new comic book, and I don't know how long. I just read comics online for free, and or I just read Zenscope. If I can't find what I want, like I've had Marvel Unlimited for a while, and even then I wasn't reading anything new. I was going back and just like reading old Amazing Spider Man's or fucking Thor, the Hulk, or X Men or stuff like that. So I wasn't even reading anything that they were putting out now. Oh shit! Last no. thing I bought was the trade for uh, Ash versus uh, uh, Marvel Zombies versus Army of Darkness. Oh nice! Last thing I bought was Spidey. I actually like that Marvel Zombie series. Um, up until I think they did Marvel Zombies five, I think it was, and then I think I just like stopped caring. Never read Marvel Zombies. The original run wasn't so bad because I think it was only like a five or six series thing, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it, was, it, it should have just run. been a one shot. It was a fun little idea. But yeah. And even then, they tried to like spike sales by having multiple variant covers and everything. So if Instead of just getting six books to have the whole the whole set, you had to go out and buy like four copies of each one because you had to get all the different like covers and this and that. And some covers were more rare than others. I don't. Know. I just bought one of each. I just went to the comic shop and would buy one of each and just be like, "I'm good enough." I 
don't have to like have the variant covers to go home and like fucking jerk off over the idea of I have them all. <laughs> yeah, that's why I got the trade paperback because then it has all the covers in it. So yeah, I mean, I don't care if it goes up in value or not. Just wanted to read it. No, but um, thing about what I liked about Marvel Zombies, I didn't read it when it originally came out. I like read it maybe a few years after it did. Um, when it became a uh, trade paperback. Um, what I liked about it was like they had this kind of like Marvel at the time, like they had this level. They probably had like some idea, like oh hey, you know it's the zombie thing. Why don't Why don't we just fuck around with uh with our characters? Why don't we just fuck around with our characters just for fun? It's not gonna be part of the continuity. We're just gonna have a little bit of fun. We're gonna kill some off in gruesome, gruesome fashions. We're gonna change things up a bit, and let's see where we go with this, and and see if it takes off. Maybe people will enjoy it. Maybe people understand it's a joke. It's not meant to be taken serious. So I kind of agree with Frank. Yeah, it should have been a one-off thing, because I think it was what um, two. I think was still the continuation of the first run, and I think three is where it deviated. Um, if I remember I correctly. I Nah, it's because been then so they long, made, I don't remember. And then they made a uh, the the then they made a mini and then they made another miniseries, which was supposed to be the conclusion of one and two, which was uh, Marvel Zombies Returns, which is basically kind of telling the story of who's still left alive, what happened after two, this kind of like mini civil war that broke off uh, broke out between it. Like again, they were having a little bit of fun with it, but they kind of thought to themselves, all right, let's tell the original story. Let's end it there. And uh, sure enough, they left it in a kind of like a time loop thing where it kind of repeats itself in its own universe. So it was something that I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed because it was Marvel just having fun with things. Like they didn't really have like an agenda with it. It was just them saying, you know what, let's just have a little bit of fun with these things and see where it goes. And now it's like, I can't even pick up a Marvel comic without worrying if at some point some page is going to try to slap me in the face and preach some some stupid social justice, feminist, queer, race agenda, whatever it may be at this point. Yep. Speak, speaking of page, justice for page. Get it trending. Hashtag justice for page. True story, bro. See it on we Facebook. Want- see it on Twitter. Justice for Page, episode eight. Though, I wanted to ask you something since you, know, you, um, I actually found this the other day in my um. Mom was doing some cleaning and she found this. I bought this a while back. Maybe you could tell me when this came out. Uh, well, I, I know when it came out, but more about this because I might actually start looking for the trade paperback of this. But a couple years ago, I would probably say like maybe six or seven years ago. Uh, there was a guy selling comic books on the train. That's, like, very common here in New York City sometimes. Like, some homeless dude who has some comic books from, like, the 90s or something will sell comic books just to get some extra money. So he sold me. I, I bought this off of him because it looked cool at the time. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll read this. And um, it's it's Maximum Carnage Spider-Man Unlimited. And it says the awesome conclusion on it. Basically, it was a three-way battle between Spider-Man, Venom, and Carnage. Uh, what number is it written on there? Where is is it is it issue like number three sixty five or sixty six? I think that was a mini series, wasn't it? It was a mini series. It was a mini series within the Amazing Spider Man series. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I look at inside the the the, after the first page. On the first page, it says uh, Spider Man Unlimited Volume One, Number Two, August nineteen ninety three. Okay, that's something totally different then. All right. Yeah, I wanted to ask more about that because uh, I found it and I was like, "Huh, I was surprised I still had this." Yeah, I, I didn't. I don't have anything Spider-Man Volume Two, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, All right, I guess I'll the hunt's on and just see if I can find like a trade paperback somewhere and read it. Yeah, because I say in Volume One of Spider-Man, I think it's like issue number like three sixty-one or sixty-two or something like that. They have the, it's like the first appearance of Carnage or something like that. And it's like a three or four book thing where he's fighting Carnage and Venom and all that stuff. And it culminates with all three of them going at it. Oh, this is probably the, uh, the continuation of that, I guess. I have no idea. That's why I want, this, um, wanted to ask you now that I noticed it actually laying here. Huh. 
So, anybody got anything else? That's pretty much it. All right. Episode eighty-three. Now, three of us were on. Four of us were on that last night. Um, those of you who, the two of you who weren't on and listened, what'd you think? Fucking hilarious. Yeah, it sounded like it was a lot of fun. I yeah. found the experience to be intoxicating. <laughs> yeah, uh, I nearly died joined. of laughter. Oh, yeah, you didn't hit the depth charge noise as many times as I thought you would. You only hit it a couple times. I didn't want to oh, be really annoying. Once. I didn't want to be annoying with it because it wasn't my show. Uh, it was their show. So if it would have been if I'd have, if it would have been fan casting, oh yeah, I'd have been fucking hitting the, the dive sound every time I dropped one in. But no, I went through six depth charges. How many did you do last show. week, dude? Uh, five show. or six. Five or six. It's about the same. Yeah. yeah. The whole episode. Like, I, I don't think there was a moment where you didn't speak where I wasn't like laughing or something. Yeah, difference was I didn't have anything to eat before last night's episode, so I, stuff, I think the stuff started whacking me a lot harder and a lot faster and sooner than it should have. Well, I liked your comments this morning. You're like, did I buy something? <laughs> yeah, I completely... <laughs> dude, I listened, to, I listened to the episode back today, because I got up and I saw that it was posted and everything. I was like, alright, go Podbean and download it. So I started listening to it back, and like, there was stuff that was being talked about on the show that I was like, dude, I remember that, but I remember that happening like weeks ago. But no shit, that was last night. Damn. Yep. I gotta say, uh, last night's episode might possibly be my favorite. Um, it might have uh, beaten. What was it? I think it was. Um, damn, Ox don't know which episode it was. The one where they did Shia LaBeouf and everything. <laughs> oh, that was a while oh. back. Oh, no clue. Oh, I really love that episode only because of that whole Shia LaBeouf. Um, segment where you had like Shia LaBeouf being the iceberg and the Titanic simultaneously. <laughs> well, not really Just that. do it. The episode. Oh. it! It can't, yeah, it won't stop us. It won't divide us. No. Never mind. I thought it was funny. I think it's funny every time they steal his fucking that. flag. He yeah. went crazy because, well, he was already crazy, but I mean, he went literally like, off the rails crazy because of that. I think he's just somebody that takes himself way too seriously. Well, typical Hollywood, isn't it? Well, he was in a movie called uh, Holes he's, once. He's no, that's it's not necessarily typical Hollywood because there are some people in Hollywood that don't take themselves like that seriously. That they don't think that they're there to like change the fucking world. Yeah. yeah the days. Plus, his whole message of Trump will not divide us. So it's like, oh, so he's going to unite everybody? Good idea. I like that. <laughs> Dude, it was the worst here in um in the city when that happened. There were moments I couldn't even leave this house without having to um to hear on the news how like shit was happening. Hell, I didn't even know that it was happening in the city. I was gonna go and uh, you, did you see the videos where the people were like fucking with him on live on live uh, stream? Yes. Like yep. I was about to go there, like because I recognized somebody on that video that um I don't know his name, but I recognized him because I used to frequent um. Gay bars. City, uh, yeah, gay. <laughs> good one. I told you, I'm perfectly straight. Yeah, you're as straight as a windy road. <laughs> okay, I haven't heard that one before. You win. Um, no, nah, um, when I used to go to like the city, go to like comic shops or Nintendo, um, the Nintendo World store, I remember seeing him there. But I think I remember. No, he looked like a guy I seen there before, and I was like, huh. I could have sworn I've seen that guy before. He looks just like him too. And I'm like, he did he really go fuck with this dude in person? And I was thinking, I was like, wait a second, it's in New York, and I had to go ask somebody, and they were like, yeah, you didn't know that he was like, uh, like he was trying to make a whole thing about it. And I'm like, wait, is it too late to go fuck with him? And they were like, nah, they closed it down because he went, he actually assaulted someone, and it turns out that the person he assaulted was not even a like somebody that like a 4chan or anything like that. It was somebody who was actually supporting him. It was like one of his fans. So he got the wrong guy. Yeah, I saw that the video correct. of him and saw that's what was my impress person impression. I was like, wait a minute, this guy seems to be supporting you. Why are you a yeah, but you know. Hey. Oh Shia LaBeouf. 
Yeah. He wasn't ready for the shy. Surprise. Shia LaBeouf. LaBeouf boof. Now, now he's just screaming racist at people at random and something about french fries, I think. No, I just... <laughs> Yep. I always thought it was funny when they were like people like he would have his like flag thing up and people would steal it and take it down. So then like he he hit it someplace to keep him from getting it and Reddit went to work and they were able to like pinpoint the exact location. It was like in England or something like that. <laughs> so they went and fucking got it again. No, the one with England, they did it. I think it was in the England when they went to the museum. The he they didn't steal it, but they mat they uh, because they forgot to bring like a pair of scissors because apparently right. it was like. They held it up with, I think, cable ties or something like that. So they um, they forgot to bring a pair of scissors. But the fact that it actually had people, um, like, they, they, they completely went, like, kind of on Mission Impossible on that museum building. The museum said, all right, we're not doing this anymore. Shia, yeah. take your flag elsewhere. Dun, dun, so dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Just needed Tom Cruise to come fucking lowering from the roof on cables to get it. No wait, let me do it. I'm the t- I'm the future Tom Cruise. That's what. Uh huh. What did what did? Okay, I must admit I didn't what? fully understand the running like time Tom Cruise. What the hell was that? That was it's... from Family Guy. Oh. Yep. You can't catch me, gay thoughts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look that up, obviously. Because I, because he in those Mission Impossible movies, he's like runs a ridiculously. No, long he runs way. in like almost every movie from like Legend Top Gun till now. Well, he didn't run in Top Gun. It was on a motorcycle. Yeah, or a jet plane. But yeah. he's running like it's Legend. a two hundred yard sprint, but he runs like a mile and a half. Sure. <sighs> you guys even here today? Gee whiz! I'm here. I've been participating, Aiden. Look at no pro. None. Damn it. All right, so on episode 83, we we did we did do play did anybody have any more groupings of women to to uh, announce or is anybody who wasn't on episode 83 what, do we want to play uh, Mary Fuck Kill or not? Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, some. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. I'll, uh, I lost. I like lost on this, but I still have one grouping. On All right. Well, I've got I've got my list pulled up, so oh, I can I can go to town on it. So I'll be like the moderator, I guess. Sounds so, good. Gentlemen, you know the rules: fuck one, marry one, kill one. Uh, be as detailed as possible how you would kill them. Not detailed about how you'd fuck or marry them. Liquid Metal Pro. Um, fuck. Okay. So round <laughs> one, fight. We have Ariana Grande. Beyonce and Emma Stone. Well, don't go all, at once. <laughs> don't everyone just fucking go at once, man. Oh, okay. uh, what was the second one? Hang again? on, I, I'll, Beyonce. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up. Ariana right. Grande, Beyonce, and Emma Stone. Yeah. So Brian, you go because I'll just have you guys go in order right. of your. Well, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna the, the Mary fuck kill in that order. So. Uh, I'm not very creative, so it's just going to be, you know, a punch to the throat or something. Well, okay. Uh, Liquid Mel Pro. I'm killing myself on this one. I do not <laughs> care for any of those three. Okay. <laughs> no, Liquid, no. Lovely. Frank. Pop out. I yeah. would say fuck Beyonce, but uh, ugh. maybe if she was still in Destiny's Child, but nah. Frank. All right. Fuck Arianda. Mary Beyonce. And I kill Emma Stone by tying up and having a rape by a horse. All right. Justin. Fuck Ariana. Mary Beyonce and take the hundred bucks she's worth and kill Emma Stone by reenacting Spider Man 2. Made to Spider Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, good one. one. All right, Eduardo. Uh, let's see. Fuck Ariana Grande. Uh, kill Beyonce, marry Emma Stone. All right. I would fuck Beyonce. Then I would marry Ariana Grande. 
And then I will kill Emma Stone by sending her to an Ariana Grande concert and hoping it gets bombed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next round we have. Are we going to rotate? We have Mila, oh. Kun- if you want to, we can. We want to what? Brian, would you like to? Do All you right, have I one? got a list now. These first two women, because I'm old, in their prime, not as they are now. Fair enough. Okay. Sophia Loren, Ooh. Raquel Welch, Emma Stone. I'll go first. Uh, for starters, I don't care if it's Sophia Loren now and no, or in her prom. I, oh, God. How does Sophia Loren look now? I, I'm going to fuck Good. Raquel Welch. Then I'm going to marry Sophia Loren. And then I'm going to kill Emma Stone by dropping her off the arch. <laughs> For those of you guys that don't know what the arch is, it's the Gateway Arch. It's a fucking 630 foot tall thing in in St. Louis. Gateway to the we're very, West. We're very famous for it. You said it was Sophia Loren and who else? Raquel Welch. Well, you don't know who they are either. Raquel <laughs> <laughs> Welch. Hold on. Hey, Here I'll those, go back to the you know, the 1890s if you want me to. Well, it's good to see that Brian was able to pull out old names that nobody knows who they are except, well, me. Probably Frank, too. Dude, if you I just Google, Google search Raquel Welch images, you'll... One million I'm doing BC. Now. You think I'm, I'm, think I'm, I'm not doing it? Uh, Frank, you can go while uh, Ding Dong's over there trying to figure out how to clicky-clack the keyboard. Here, I'll put it in the chat. Right. Get I it right. Beat her. I will fuck Sophia Loren. I will marry Raquel Welch. And I will kill Emma Stone by burying her in cement. There you go. Damn. Justin. Um, fuck Sophia Loren. Marry the other one and kill Emma Stone by... I don't know, gun to the head. I don't know. Oh. Quick and simple. That was her in Bedazzle? Oh, yes. Shit. Are you yeah. ready, Liquid Metal the Pro? Original or you Bedazzled. Still... Oh my Jeez. god, I, I don't know which one of the two to choose to fucking marry. I think I'm just going to toss a coin and, and, and go from there. <laughs> All right. Wait, I'll, hold on, I want to go. Go ahead. All right. Uh, I guess uh, I'm marrying. Um... Oh, he's going? Yeah. Uh, right, fuck right, Kate Belch. Uh. Let's see, I'll marry Sophia, kill Emma Stone. All right. Who's Kate Welch? I don't know who Kate Welch is either. <laughs> um, okay. Are you finally ready? Yes. I, I was That's ready what she said. Let go. <laughs> Not to him. <laughs> All right, so uh, fucking Sophia, for Sophia Loren, marrying Raquel Welch, and uh, Emma Stone... Um, I'll break her back with my knee like so. All right. Nobody? Okay. Frank, you got a list? Nobody. Oh, wait, I I I'll admit that was a hard one. That's right. definitely not one. what she said. <laughs> 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 okay. Nobody remembers Mad TV. Uh, I avoided that show. Look up it Mexican was... Muslim Theater. That shit is hilarious. It was good the first couple of seasons, and then it sucked. No, this one has Sasso in it still. All right. My Frank? List. Milo Jovovich, Kristana Logan, or Emma Stone. Damn, you you kind of faded out a little bit on that second one. What was it? Milo Jovovich, Kristana Logan, or Emma Stone. Hmm. I'm going to fuck Mila Jovovich, marry the other one, and then Emma Stone is going to get body in a wood chipper. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Chris Donald Loken was in uh, the Terminator 3. That, oh! And it, Blood Rain. It doesn't matter. I'll marry her, and then, like I said, Emma Stone. <laughs> Here you go. In that case, I'll go next. Uh Okay. Oh, um, fuck me, little <laughs> bitch. Uh, Mary Emma Stone killed the kill the other one, kill Christina. Christina. Mhm. Okay. 
It's my turn. Brian. Yes. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to do somewhat the opposite. I'm going to I'm going to do Kristana, marry Mila, and um, toss Emma to the wolves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin. Who is that, Mila? Mila Yelovich. She was Resident in the Evil? Fifth Element. Um, Resident, Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Yeah. Oh, Alice? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, fuck. Now I don't know who, which one to kill. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck, I'll probably fuck um, Christina. I'll probably marry uh, Alice because she probably has some money left. <laughs> um. Emma Stone will get hit by a train. <laughs> woo woo! Tie her up to the tracks. Choo choo! There's no hero. Liquid Metal Pro. Um, I'm in the same camp in the sense of uh, Mary and Mila. Um, fuck the other chick. Emma Stone. This is a good. I'm trying to think of a good one. Um, I don't Feeder. know. Simple neck snap, maybe. Feed her to the burrows. <laughs> You know, I'm not even calling Liquid Metal Pro anymore. It's, it's too hard to fucking read out. Your name's Javier. From now on, you're just Javier. <laughs> you know what? That's fine. I can live with that. Okay. All right. Who's got a list? I do. Okay. Chloe Bennett. Mm. Scarlett Johansson. Or Adriana Pilecki. Uh, Wait, what? Okay. Um, Doing it wrong. Who wants to? Who wants to go? Um. What was Adrian? Right. Get names in the chat. I. Uh, yes. Because yeah. you got All Adriana. Right. You've got Chloe Bennett. Who was the third one? Or Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. All right, I'm killing Chloe Bennett. I can't stand her. Um, she's got a nice butt, but she just annoys the crap out of me. I think I'm going to tie Scarlett up and do her all night and marry uh, uh, Adriana. Adriana. Leaky. All right, I am uh, going to marry Adriana. Or, uh, fuck Adriana, marry Scarlett Johansson, and then I'm going to kill Emma Stone by force feeding her <laughs> nothing but like l buckets of lard. I don't remember him hey. saying Emma Stone, but hey, I'm old and I don't hear no good. Uh, force a habit, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, somebody else go. Um, We're dying here. Uh, damn it, man, you tossed me a curveball with this one. Fuck Chloe, Mary, uh... Oh, God, I'm forgetting the name. Scarlett Johansson and kill the other one. I'll oh. switch it up a bit. I'll, um... Uh, Mary, Scarlett Johansson, fuck, I guess, Chloe... No, fuck it. Eh. Adriana, I guess, and then kill Chloe. I don't know, you could throw me a curveball with this one. <laughs> that was the general idea. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll get you back at some point. I'll fuck Chloe, I'll marry Scarlet, and I will kill Emma Stone by making her walk through hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, next group. Nobody? All right, I'll go. Uh, B. Arthur. <laughs> Betty. Prime or. Uh... Yes, Prime. B. Arthur, Betty White, Emma Stone. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I know who I'm killing. I'll take the time machine back in time and uh, I'll fuck Bay Arthur. Uh, Betty White, I'll marry. I don't care if she's old because, goddamn, that woman's gonna have money and plus she sounds like a fun, uh, very chill person. And uh, Emma Stone, you guys ever watch Celebrity Deathmatch? Yes. Yeah. No. I'm gonna put her in the time machine and send that uh, and age her like a thousand years. So when she comes out, she's like brittles to death. <laughs> brittles to death. 
Like, like, you know, like she was like old and brittle. Like, if she you, started like decom- like composing or something, I don't know. I, uh, Fuck it. Did, I, did you, you know? Just... Here's the thing: if you put her in a time machine and send her forward, she's gonna come out of the time machine the same age that you put her in at. No, no, we're not gonna gloss over the fact that he just turned brittle into a verb. No, I, I heard it too. I just figured it was the ESL. <laughs> Hey, man, it's New York City. Our education department is absolute shit. We could have used a teacher like you at some point. Yeah, well, I'm out of that hey, business. Hey, guys, now. guys, I know I have a good answer for this. Okay. I'll kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're taking the damn hey, way Hey, you don't know out. what you're missing out on. Yeah, you're not Dan Kane. <laughs> Only you're... Dan Kane can t- kill Dan Kane. You're Edmund Canalupo. <laughs> <laughs> My friends call me Eddie. All right, I'm. Uh, said, I, I'm. A, I'm. I'm going to change my. I'm going to change up just because. So, um, B. Arthur. Yep, yeah, she's gone. I'm going to do Emma Stone, but she ain't going to enjoy any of it. And I'm <laughs> marrying Betty White because uh, she just looks like great. Uh, especially the young Betty White. She looks like great marriage material. Good job, Brian. You're welcome. Yeah, pretty much the same for me. Don't like Emma <sighs> Stone, but holy fuck, Betty. Be Arthur. <laughs> All right. Anybody else got stuff? Because I've got tongues. I can just keep pumping them out there for you. I'm tapped out. Yeah, give us another one. Let's go. Okay, so Selena Gomez. Ooh. Wait a minute. Okay. As a, Okay. Selena now, as a, not as, a, as an adult. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> fucking pervert. <laughs> Han, Hannah Jeter, if you don't know who that is, she was the uh, the direct TV commercial chick, the girl on the horse and all that stuff on the beach. Huh. She's a model. Swimsuit really? model. Oh, my. Oh. Yeah. So you got Hannah Jeter, spelled mm-hmm. just like the baseball player's last name. Because she's married uh, to him. No. Uh, Selena Gomez. And Emma Stone. Mm, good one. Fuck Selena. Marry the other one. And kill Emma Stone. Oh, geez, I'm running out. <laughs> Tie her to a tree and leave her there. All right, Brian. All right, Hannah already looks used up, so I'm just going to flip her over and uh, get on with life. Boy. Emma's, I'm going to um, drop from a hot air balloon and I'm marrying Selena. Okay. Javier. Senor. <laughs> um, I think I'll fuck Hannah. Selena Gomez married. She's got to have money. And uh, Emma Stone... Freezer, cryogenically freezer, and then smash it with a hammer. All right. Oh. Justin back. Hmm. I'll give a mercy fuck to Hannah. A marriage to Selena, and I'll reenact the uh, lawnmower scene in Brain Dead to Emma. Wait, wait, which scene? The lawnmower scene. Oh shit! From the happening. Javier likes dead. that. He, he really likes that alive. scene because it involves lawn care. <laughs> Dude, I, I, when the first time I saw that movie, I could not, yo, that movie it was like one of the best things I've ever seen. It was just so fucking over the top crazy and hilarious. Yeah, it was. What? Right. No. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. It's coming back to me. This calls for some divine intervention. Okay, Eddie Cannelloni, go. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm, this one's this one's a tough one. Uh, fuck Selena. Kill Emma Stone. Marry the other one. Okay. Yes, the correct answer is fuck Selena Gomez. Marry Hannah Jeter, and then kill Emma Stone by putting her in the Iron Maiden. 
Wow, yeah. so I got the correct answer. <laughs> Classic. Okay, uh, Zoe Sal. Yeah, Zoe Saldana. Okay. Cheryl Cole. And uh, Shane Emma Stone. You said Cheryl. Cheryl, what? Cole. Hmm. You're, you've got two people to get through before it's your turn, so get typing. Brian Lape. I got to look these up. I don't know who these people Jesus. are. Jesus. Frank. I'm trying to Cheryl Cole, so I guess I'll give you an answer right now. Um, I'm going to go. Damn. Um, damn. She looks beautiful. Um, yeah, she is. Uh, we're talking about Shirley to... Cole? Cheryl yeah. Cole. All right, with a Y? Turn up the hearing aid. <laughs> what was the first one again? <laughs> oh, Zoe man. Saldana, the green chick from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Damn. Um, you know what? Marry Cheryl. Uh-huh. Um, fuck Zoe Saldana, just cuz. And uh, Emma Stone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it classic too. I'm gonna tire to the railroad tracks and just wait for the next passing train. Yeah. <laughs> Frank. Uh, fuck Cheryl, marry Zoe, kill Emma Stone by making her eat a whole bunch of Mentos and Diet Cola. Lovely. Ooh. That's a mercy That's killing, by the way. White Castle commercials on right now, and they're showing off some of their waffle sliders. Uh-oh. And uh, there, there's one. It's got it's it, it's a waffle slider with Nutella in it. So it's just two little waffles with Nutella in the middle. It looks really good. Oh, that sounds like food well, porn. Do you like waffles? <sighs> yeah, we like waffles. Do you like pancakes? Yeah, we like pancakes. Do, 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 do. Can't wait to get a mouthful. Uh huh. <laughs> you want a mouthful on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brian Light. All right. This is not easy. Um, Because between Cheryl and Zoe, that's a... That's a... It's it's a head scratcher. That is a tough choice. I I think... uh, I think it's uh, Mary Zoe do something creative with with, uh, Emma and um, have a fun time with Cheryl. She looks like a... She looks like a little crazy. I might right. be tired. Oh, up. hey, I just got a, I just got an idea for the next one. Anyway, right. uh, Eddie Cannoli. Condi- Don't ever say cannoli <laughs> again. Uh oh. Okay. okay, so um, I can only wait, think that he's upset about choice? this. Who's the first choice? <laughs> Zoe Saldana. Okay, yeah. Fuck Zoe Saldana. Mary Emma Stone. Kill Cheryl. Okay, Justin. I just got back, so. Zoe Saldana, Cheryl Cole, and Emma Stone. Um, I'll take Cheryl and fuck her. Marry uh, Zoe, and I'll kill Emma Stone. All right. Okay. Next round, guys. Oh, I got this. I got this. Okay. okay. Haley Atwill, <gasps> Allison Mack, or Kate Beckinsale? Fuck Kate. Okay. Mary Haley. Kill Emma Stone. With a- <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't even an option. I have made her an option. <laughs> I'm. I'm gonna. Fuck Allison Mack. I'm going to marry Haley, and then I'm going to kill Emma Stone by dropping into a deep fryer. <laughs> mm. um, I think I might marry Haley Atwell. Um, fuck Allison and uh, Emma Stone. I'm going to just... Uh, I'm going to tie her to the back of the car. And just keep driving and pretend not to hear any of the screams. There you go. <laughs> Talking just like just like Chevy Chase and National Lampoon's Vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Toss him a stone off a bridge. Uh, <laughs> Beckinsale. 
Do Kate Beckinsale tell him out of Vampire Blood and Mary Haley? All right. That's Justin, right? Yep. Yep. I'll marry Kate Beckinsale. I'll fuck the other one and hmm. Emma Stone. I'll. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know with a truck. <laughs> kind of hard to think of new ones. <laughs> Without being all too right. gruesome. Why does it you all just keep adding Emma Stone, even though I didn't say her as an option? I don't even know what you're talking about. All right, so guys, let's put our prime hats on because we're going to have to talk about women in their prime. Your choices okay. are Audrey Hepburn. Ooh. Uh. Christine uh, Brinkley, Christy Brinkley, mm. and uh, ooh, this chick, she'd be perfect. Uh, Emma Stone, <laughs> Uptown Girl, huh? Mm-hmm. What was the second choice? Christ, Christy Brinkley. Okay. Billy Joel's ex-wife. Uh, Billy yeah, Joel's the ex-wife. The, isn't she's also the blonde chick in the in the hot rod? That Chevy Chase chases across the country. Yeah. And National Lampoon's Vacation. Eddie, have you seen that movie? What? It's a 70s seen, movie, probably not. Have you seen National Lampoon's Vacation? No. Yeah. It's yeah, not a 70s cool. movie. It's an early 80s movie, I believe. I thought it was 78. I, don't know, I could have sworn it was like 82 or 3. Anyway, go. Somebody go. All right. Um, Mary Audrey Hepburn. Fuck Christy Brinkley. Damn, she still looks good now. Um, and uh, Emma Stone. Uh, I'll reenact that shooting scene from The Crow. She'll play the part of Brandon Lee. Bo- <laughs> oh. oh, good. Brian. Uh, I stand corrected. It is 1983. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> I would uh, do Christy Brinkley only because she seems like really crazy and has commitment issues. Audrey Hepburn, we're going to get married and run away. And uh, I don't know what to do with Emma Stone. I'll just leave her somewhere in a box. <laughs> What's in the box? What's in the book? <laughs> What's in the box? Cookie- hey, Cookie Man, what's in the box? All right, Frank. I'm the Cookie Monster. Okay, I will. Uh, shit, I don't know. I will fuck Audrey Hepburn. I will marry Christy Brinkley. And Emma Stone is going to get. Oh, shit. Harry did the deep fryer. Fuck. <laughs> oh, no pre wife tonight, huh? No, she's working. No. All right, Emma Stone, I will kill her by making her watch the new Ghostbusters on a continual loop when she <laughs> kills herself. So clockwork orange style with her uh, her uh, eyelids taped open? Yes. Forced open? Yep. <laughs> um, Buck Hempbud, Mary Brinkley, and... Uh, Put Emma Stone in a massive shootout. See if she survives. Okay, uh, Justin. Christina Brinkley, I'll marry. Um, Audrey Hemphill, I'll fuck. And um, put Emma Stone in a school shooting. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right. This round is a special round. I call it Women of Brian Leif's Youth. <laughs> oh, no. So your choices are Mae West, <laughs> Joan Crawford, oh. and Emma Stone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go first. Uh, this one is easy. Do Mae West, Mary Joan Crawford, and uh, leave Emma Stone in the black and white somewhere. All right. Uh, I'll go to Frank because I'm sure Liquid Mel Pro has no idea who these women I mean, Javier has no idea who these women are. Too late. I already looked them up. 
<laughs> oh, thank God. He actually was on the ball. Why don't you come up and see me sometime? Frank. Mark May West. Mary Joan Crawford. And Emma Stone. I think I'll draw for him in the Grand Canyon. Holiday Road. Okay. Javier. Um, fuck me. Mary Joan. And Emma Stone. Um, I guess it rubs the lotion on the skin until I figure out how to kill her. So you're <laughs> going to kill her and make a woman suit. Perfect. Uh, Justin. Um, I'll marry Joan Crawford. Yeah, I'll, may, I'll give Emma Stone a fuck. Fuck it. And Mae West. I don't know. Leave her to die in the desert. There you go. Um, Eddie Cannelloni. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Fuck Emma Stone. Marry Mae West. Kill Joan Crawford. Uh, the correct answer is fuck Joan Crawford. Marry Mae West. And then kill Emma Stone by... Hmm. How would I take out Emma Stone this time? Eh, fuck. We'll just hang her. I can't think of anything creative. So you're going to give her the Lincoln Park treatment? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to wrap a belt around her neck and hang her by a doorknob. <laughs> she left behind six kids. Goes out like Chuckles uh, Dingleberry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we want to play another round? Because I have a special round that I would like to call... Mm, no, okay. that round. So let's just. How about this? Let's. No, give we gotta have one more. Give one us more. your best list, man. Okay. How about this? Let's go with. Uh, Mila Kunis. Okay. I think we did one similar. Hang on, Mila Kunis. Jessica Alba. Ooh. Emma Stone. Ooh. Brian Lake. Okay. That's actually tough because Mila and Jessica are definitely the kind you want to cuddle with the rest of your life with. But sort of. Jessica is far more entrepreneurial and probably has more money. So I'm going to marry her, have a heck of a lot of fun with Mila, and we'll all kill Emma Stone. Okay. <laughs> Frank? Uh, fuck Jessica, marry Mila, and kill Emma Stone by force feeding her 83 gallons of cake batter. Ooh, that's a good one. Javier. Hmm. This is pretty easy. Um, well, for the first two at least. Fuck Mila. Marry. Hmm. Marry Alba. And Emma Stone. I'm going to just perform Sub-Zero's Fatality on her. Fuck it. Oh, you have those powers now. <laughs> Justin, back. I was talking about the the fine rip. Okay. Again. Uh, fuck Mila. Mary, Jessica Alba, and Rumma Stone. I'll go with more combat. I'll do um, Scorpion's Fatality. Oh, nice. Eddie Cunnilingus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Um. Damn, that, that was too distracting. Okay. Um. Mary Jessica. Fuck. Mila Kunis. Kill Emma Stone. Yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, the correct answer is fuck Jessica Alba, marry Mila Kunis, and then kill Emma Stone by beating her to death with her own shoes. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, was this week's episode of, or this week's vert up. That was Fuck, Mary Kill for this week. Brian, what's next? All righty. So, uh, well, uh, anything left with episode 83 that got covered, didn't want to get covered? I know they talked about the action figures, um, the, new, the new stuff. I don't know if anybody gives a crap anymore. I did find the video. There are several videos on YouTube that show all of the, the various toys and stuff. I don't know. They just seem, they seem blasé to me. Just bleh. Yeah. The new character is kind of, it's like, 
it's really that big of a surprise that it's like two possibly overpowered women. Yeah, well, they really, I mean, Daisy Ridley was kind of cute in the first one, and now they've really toned her down, like, almost made her butchified. She was never cute. She yeah. was cute playing a dead yeah, like I, show. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, like I said in the Facebook, she kind of now looks like one of those uh, effeminate males in, like, fantasy movies. So yeah. I guess yeah. they're what every female wants is just a man that looks like a woman. Well, that's what the third wave feminists want. But that... When a man looks like a woman, yeah. everyone's sexually confused. <laughs> so that closes out episode 83 coverage. So we can turn to the Facebook page. And there was a link posted there uh, rating movies. And I think there was some comments that need, wanted to be made about those ratings. I'm fairly certain that Javier was the one that had to talk about this. You are right, senor. Yes, our special guest, Javier Bardeen. This has become the Javier it, episode. That's fine. Yeah. Now, there you go. That's the, that could be the title of the episode. Episode 9, now with more ha Javier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't like my Star Wars The Last Lesbian? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but... Ah, fuck it. Go you ahead and call it that. about Star Wars this episode. I found, I've been yeah. looking for Star Wars cosplayers that are kissing, so I got some good pictures. Any hot ones? <laughs> oh, they're all hot. Thank you, sir. Probably hotter than Daisy Ridley. Ugh. Yeah, man, okay, I, fine. I'm not a Just stretch. Smack me around, that's fine. I deserve it. Is, that's, is that bad. what you want Daisy Ridley to do to you? No. You want her to smack you around, give you a little slap and tickle? Look, until she knows how to handle a lightsaber, I don't want her coming near me. Well, you could always have her practice <laughs> by having her handle you. Yeah, I, I'm not into teaching anymore. they got to have at least a little bit of know-how. I ain't got the time. I would love, I would love for Ronda Rousey to handle me. She, she's only. Oh, whoa, like, what the heck was that sound? That's oh. that's. I think he's finished. <laughs> <laughs> Better hope that she doesn't get knocked out in the first thirty-eight seconds. <laughs> Probably accidentally slapped her. She's already bruised up. All right, LMP, let's all let's go, man. Yeah, let's go, Javier. This is your time to shine. All right, so give me one of them movies. Oh, for fuck. I thought you had the link. Go to the Facebook. Oh, what? You're not on Facebook. That's right. You're not on Facebook. It's fucking useless, this guy. So useless. <gasps> Next week's episode will be with less Javier. <laughs> Get some popcorn. People. Just like that. I disappoint. Uh, My yeah. heritage. Uh, you it's disappoint more than just your heritage. <laughs> Hey man, I got my I got my Latino card revoked last week, so uh, officially I'm a race trader. Damn it! Here, I'll put point. it in the chat. All right, Is that hold on. not brown anymore? He's not brown enough to criticize. Is that what that means? Yeah, apparently I'm a apparently I'm a racist. Go figure. So you would be a T.O. Tom then. A T.O. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, yo. Well, you and Jeff, you know. Oh, what the fuck? I put it in Hold the on, chat. To... Should... Do, 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 Nothing but dead air, man. Nothing but dead air. Oh, we're so this anyway, we're is talking about a list. Radio, radio. Come on, Javier, right now. Okay. <laughs> Please tell me I finally got this shit to work. Spider-Man 3. Four While we're waiting... Oh. Uh, well, this is a crappy-ass computer, so... um, I mean, it was steal made by Boro. A very intelligent one at that. Well, steal a better one. Yeah. Spider-Man 3 is awesome. No, okay, it isn't. So I got the, letter, so I got the, the page up. I'm going to take a look. What the hell are these ratings? <laughs> <laughs> Those are my five-star ratings. I'm sorry. I, I looked at the wrong... Australia. Okay. Oh, um, what are you doing? Come on, Javier. Is. 
Boy, this is the okay. best episode. Okay, we'll five. Uh, if, uh, yeah, it's a little much. It started off slow, then it got really good, and I started to you know pick things up, and then now it's fucking dying. Yep. So I'll take you. Okay, like wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Final Destination movies. Go, hold on. Go to. Hold on. Hold on. That's where I, you were I, griping what before. The yeah, what the was, hell is this? What the hell is this? He was full of piss and vinegar. Yeah, okay. we should have started recording then. Who the hell gives a five to Child's Play three? Hey, hey, hey! The, the Child's Play trilogy, the, the first three. No, 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 no! You, you, you listen here. It's Child's Play three. How do you justify the five for that movie alone? It ends a perfect trilogy. It wasn't a trilogy. It was like five. Yes, movies. it was. The first two were good. The first, the 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 first three are called Child's Play. And then then they move on to Bride of Chucky for some reason. Yeah, but it's the same movie series. It's not. I know. Cut off. But, but it, I I treat the Child's Play. It doesn't first even. It doesn't as a even follow its own floor. Like he, the whole reason why the Child's Play series is it even happens, why Chucky keeps coming back, is because he has to swap his soul with the person he revealed his secret identity to first. So even if we go by the logic that he dies and comes back as a different doll, the second movie already proves that since he revealed his secret initially to Andy, he has to come back to Andy. Now you expect me to believe that he has to give his soul to another person? I mean, he has to swap souls with another kid? What, Andy well, was well, his dead? blood did um, go in the uh, liquid, so... So what, Andy was too old for him now, so he had to choose a younger boy? Is that what it is? No, the whole point is that... Look, the, the magic mumbo jumbo is stupid. It was not worth five stars. I like I like Child Play Three, and I'm not gonna apologize. No, you're for you're it. like you know you're you're fine to credit uh, like crap. I got like garbage all the time. Have you ever heard how much I think Hancock is a great movie? I like I Hancock, think. but I don't give it five stars. You know what? I'm gonna look that up right now. Hancock. How much you give it? I actually saw that in theaters. It should I be in my it, four yeah. or four. It should be in my four or three stars. Dude, that movie goes so all, all over the place. I don't even know how you could give it a four. I have a question. Yeah. Spider-Man 3, you rated it as a five-star movie. Can I... I just want to hear the rationale behind that. Oh, hold on. What was that? Spider-Man Spider 3. Spider-Man 3? Yeah, you gave it five stars. I, I would like to hear the rationale behind how that was a three-star movie. Or a five-star movie. Same same thing for Child's Play Free. It just it, it it is the weakest. I I always say that the third chapters are always the weakest. But okay, so, uh, the, the, and, and there are things that throw throw me off even. But after what even uh, look the, the the theatrical cut I still I gave it five stars, but the editor's cut is a lot better. <laughs> And I and 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 like I said, it ends the trilogy perfectly. Granted, on a sour note, but perfectly. I don't need any more Spider-Man movies after that. Please explain what was perfect about Spider-Man Three. Yes. Like, Let's see. Of... Thomas Hayden Church. Yeah, I think still good. He was good. Special wasn't... effects are still good. Yeah. Okay. So Thomas I'm Hayden Church. Bryce Dallas Howard was doing a good Gwen for for like what was she for like what 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 she was written for, but she, they wrote her terribly. And I like the guy who they got also for Captain Stacy because it looked comic accurate to the. All right. Well, you gave us five. Well, there's a five for Ghostbusters here, so I'm 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 mildly uh, I'm mildly calm now. A bit. Do you want me to fix that? Uh, sure. Uh, no. Daredevil Wait. is rated at four and a half stars. Hold it, hold, hold it, hold it, hold it. Fuck that movie for a second. Uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You gave that Jim Carrey movie a five? Look, man, that's my favorite Christmas movie, along with It's a Wonderful Life. If Die Hard's not your favorite Christmas okay, movie, get out. Okay, I need you to out. explain to me right now. <laughs> exactly. I don't consider exactly. that a Christmas movie. Exactly. But I love that movie. Either Die way, Die Hard so. is definitely a Christmas movie. No, Die Hard is the best Christmas movie. Uh, period. Look, it's one of the it's the best action it's one of the best action movies. I love that movie. You're not wrong there. It's a great action movie. It's probably you're right. It is one of the best, but it's a Christmas movie. 
That's all I gotta say about it. It's Jason okay. versus Freddy. Justify yeah, Freddy versus Jason. That, that, that's, that's, that's Jason. awesome. Honestly, Freddy versus Jason could have been much better, so I would not give that a five. Temple of Doom. Not right for what it is. Ugh. Temple of Doom was horrible. That's Temple like of Doom is my yeah, favorite. Yeah, I don't get why people Jones like movie. that one. It's well, not you... that it was horrible, but Raiders of the Lost Ark was better. Yeah, yeah. that's well, my second favorite. And the Last Crusade it goes, was for good. me. It goes Temple of Doom, Raiders, Last Crusade, and there was no fourth movie. Yeah, there was. I agree with you there, but yeah, that's that's accurate. Yep. Yeah. Temple of Doom tried to play off too much of the first movie, and it was set as a prequel, and the special effects were hideous. But Last Crusade, I really liked. I think that actually might be my favorite of the three. It, it's it's tough to choose between it and uh, Junior. Yeah. Yeah. Raiders. I seriously have to ask something though, like. What is your justification for rating the movie five stars? Because that's essentially meaning that the movie is perfect. Like, it's perfect. Like, there's nothing about it should change. And yet, a lot of these movies, I would say there are tons of things you could change. Okay, for example, one of the five stars that I do see that I would say, okay, you know what? As a movie itself, I would agree it's perfect. Maybe there's not much that you can do to change it. Predator. I love that movie to death. Oh, wait, did did you see that? Did you see that on the list? Yeah, I see it here on the list. So you know what? Even though if I don't know if I would give it a five, I can understand the rationale behind it. It's one of those movies that there's nothing that should change about that movie. Don't even bother remaking it. That's another criteria we have for like a five star movie. Don't it has no need to be remade, done over, no mistakes, whatever. Yep. I could understand. They're just making sequels. Okay. That's you know what? I didn't hate the second movie as much as pe- other people do. I didn't think I gave I gave the great. second movie a three and a half. I actually like it a lot. I All right. The yeah. Okay. That's fair. I don't think I don't really hate the movies. If any, I don't really hate the second one. Like I think it's all right. It did. I it. even gave Predators, um, the third one, a four and a half. The one with um Adrian Brody. All right. Uh, now I don't know if I would go that far. I did enjoy it, but I don't think it was anywhere near as good as uh, two now. But okay. So I understand something like that. Like I can get that. But then, how do you say something like how the Grinch stole Christmas? Is a five star. Look, that's just a childhood nostalgia thing for me. It was, it's, it was my favorite. It's my favorite Christmas well, movie. Childhood nostalgia sometimes it, it, it just clouds your judgment for what, and you know, you cloud your judgment sometimes into thinking that it was perfect when sometimes it wasn't. There are a lot How of things. Explain like, ghost goosebumps. Yeah, I am not apologizing for goosebumps. Goosebumps. It, look, here, I have a good rational. Um, um, uh, All right, let's hear it. Goosebumps. Bring the evidence to the court, sir. It's kind of like. Um, well, I wouldn't say kind of like Ghostbusters. I'm not 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 to compare the plot. I'm just saying that like it's a horror film for children. Like that's I, and I don't think that's very often that, that comes film. very often. Uh, wait, hold on. And um, it's a live action horror film for children. That's why I like it so much. I don't see many of those. I would sooner say maybe light horror comedy at best. I saw that Goosebumps movie. Are we? Ta- we're, there's only one Goosebumps movie, but you know. I'm 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 gonna just be I'm gonna ask this question. Are you talking about a different Ghost a Goosebumps movie? No, I'm talking about the one with Jack Black, dude. Oh, dude, that movie could have been miles better. I actually wanted to see the movie in theaters just again for the nostalgia, you know, growing up um, reading the books in the series. But even I thought the idea of a movie of it was a little bit too much, so I didn't. Dude, have it's high- like Jumanji. You know, I watched Jumanji again and hmm. just wasn't as good as I thought it was. Yeah, n- yeah, same here. I, I mean, but, I mean, I like Jumanji, but this is what I'm trying I to. I saw it on TV and I was like, let me explain something to you. When it comes to ratings, there's a reason. There's a reason why. I mean, I've always kind of wanted to do reviews of movies and video games and all that other such, right? I've really wanted to for a very long time. And at one point, in um. I don't know how many time, how long I've been on YouTube under different accounts and different names. Uh, don't it's even the only me. skill I have, so please don't, don't, don't. Hold on. Let me let me explain something right now. That's how you get better. You don't have that skill. Okay. The thing is, what I'm trying to get at is this: when you rate movies, you're putting them on a number between one to something, or you're putting them, you giving them a letter grade, star grade, whatever. Right? There's a reason why I cannot grade movies or games sometimes because. 
It's how do I explain the rationale? For example, like if something is five out of five, the five star rating, right? How do I explain five star rating? Because five star rating basically means 100%. It is 100% a good movie, meaning it is perfect or nearly flawlessly perfect. Maybe one thing can be changed and you can rationale a five star rating because I don't know, that's how the star system works. Or it's just easier to round up than it is round down, I guess. Uh, whatever. Maybe your personal bias. I don't know. Whatever works for everybody. Look, I'm looking at another one right now. Like Dark Knight Rises, you gave that a five. I would understand you being generous and giving it a four. If that's the way you wanted to go with it. But a five? Like you're basically saying that a movie like this is as good as a movie like Ghostbusters. It's as good a movie as the first Star Wars. It's as good as a movie as, um, let's see, uh... Or Predator. I'm looking at some of the other movies that you have here. Uh, Taken, you gave a five. Again, I would not go as far as giving Taken a five. It was a good movie, and it should have been a one-off movie, because that whole franchise went to absolute garbage by the second one, and then to add... Term, uh, actually, no. It went to garbage by the second one, and absolute garbage by the third one. I don't know how you can rationale a five for Taken. It just does not... You're basically telling me that all these movies are on the same level. The, and the, to go back to my point from before, the reason why I never bothered myself to get into this whole review things, and believe me, there are things that I wanted to review, and there's still things I want to review. I would like to tell people, hey, look, I think this game is awesome, or I think this movie is awesome, or this movie is absolute garbage, or avoid this like the fucking plague. But... Wait. Might as well pause on that, because it looks like you dropped out. Yeah, did he, he drop says, out or did somebody like no he says he, he lagged or something he, he he's asking us to put him back in oh okay okay i didn't hope i didn't scare him away i was listening to well, that's what i was thinking yeah, right i didn't just scare you away if that's what you're thinking but the point i'm trying to make here is the reason why i never give number grades or i would ever say to uh, anybody oh i'd give it this or this is because I have no, uh, it's kind of like one of those things that will come back to bite you in the ass. How do you explain, okay, well, let's say, um, I'll give you an example, right? A recent example of something I wanted to review, but I didn't because I didn't know how I would justify a rating for it. They recently released the Crash Bandicoot game on the PS3. They made a, I mean, I mean the PS4, excuse me. They made a remake of the original trilogy. Now, I had problems with one of the games, which is the first game in that trilogy, I enjoyed the second one to death to the point that I would consider it nearly perfect. And the third one has a lot of things that take away from the experience. So overall, how would I grade a game like that? How would I say, okay, do I grade all three games individually as they should be? Or do I grade it all as one's trilogy because that's how it's being sold? Or do I, do, uh, or do I grade it based on changes that were made here uh, compared to the originals? It gets so complicated and convoluted to the point that I said, you know what? I'm just going to flat out tell people either it's worth picking up or it's not worth picking up. But I, I will never go as far as giving ratings because then, like, let's say if I give it in, let's say I, I'm, I'm generous and I give it a five out of five, right? Which, by the way, if you actually go read some of the reviews that people gave it online, five out of five is a stretch. Some people giving it high 90s, uh, low 90s, high 80s. I'm like, it is not a perfect remake, but it is an enjoyable nonetheless. So now you expect me to believe that a game like that is only about 10 points, maybe from the scale from, the, from, the scale from 1 to 10. Um, let's say what is one of the best uh, 10 out of 10 games that ever existed. Uh, Legend of Zelda um, um, Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of time? Any, huh? Uh, no, I was just finishing your sentence. Anyway, yeah, keep Ocarina going. Of time. Ocarina of Time is considered by many to be a 10 out of 10. That's a personal thing. I really can't blame people if that's how they see it. It's one of the greatest games ever made. So you're basically telling me that the remake, that it still has kind of some flaws or issues because, again, of how dated even the original games were, uh, the original game was. You mean to tell me that somehow it's one point away from being a perfect game? I, I cannot buy that. Like, something is wrong in that regard. So what I'm trying to get here is, how do you give these things a five-star rating? How do you explain to me that certain movies are as good as Predator, as Ghostbusters, as Star Wars. How? I cannot just accept, oh, it's nostalgic, or I enjoyed it because it's a favorite movie. Because again, you're free to enjoy 
crap. You're free to enjoy shit because it sucks. That's fine. Things suck and people enjoy crappy movies. There are crappy movies that I enjoy. But I will never go as far as say, hey, look, this movie is great. It's a five out of five just because. How do you explain that to me? Well, some of them, I, well, look, most of, the, most of the things I give five stars, I don't really even think are shitty. Granted, some of them do have problems, I will admit that. I, I don't ever questions. think they're, like, oh, so horrible. I, okay, I but then again. Question. Yeah, go ahead. How can you only give Team America World Police half a star? What? Oh, yeah, the puppet movie. Team World America. Yeah, it was a really good movie. It was well made. It was well, like, it was, what do you mean, uh, is it because it's 2004 and it's puppets and you thought it was old and dumb looking? Because that's kind of what they were, they were going for Thundercats. Thunderbirds. Now that I think about it, Whatever. that kind of does. Either, not the point. Point is, I, I just want to know, like, why you would give Team America World Police half a star. Or Arachnophobia, you gave that half a star, too. Okay, Arachnophobia, I gave a half a star just because I don't like spider movies. Giant spider movies. Okay, so it's it's a bias thing is what I'm gathering from basically your reviews. It's it's what you like about the movie more so than what you feel is objectionably strong qualities or weak qualities about the movie. It's not about, like, just because a movie has spiders in it and you hate spiders and you're deeply afraid of them, then, then why you bother reviewing the movie in the first place? If you really don't like spiders, then why would you go into a movie? This, I'm going to say something because... This one mistake I ever made in the, and that I made in my life was to go see Ghostbusters 2016. <laughs> Loser. Oh, my. Why? Because people were sent telling me, oh, don't knock it until you watch it. And I went into that movie, first of all, hating it. Hating the whole politics behind the scenes, the whole Sony email leaks, Amy Pascal, Paul Faggot. I already hated well, it. Uh, actually, I do have an answer for this. <laughs> I do have, a, I do have a, a, quite an answer for this. No, no. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Fuck it. I can't help it. <laughs> he deserves it. Just the way he says it. So matter-of-factly and so, like, directly and aggressive. Oh, thanks, Javier. I needed that. No problem, friendo. So anyways, I went into that movie because people were telling me, oh, don't knock it until you watch it. And what happened when I went to see the movie? Not yeah, only was there, there was already that bias going in. But what I saw already it even pissed me off even more. Probably if I went in there with a clear head, maybe, maybe I could have possibly seen some positives about it. And don't believe me. Don't get me wrong. There probably were one or two here and there. I thought, what's his face? Um, Thor did a decent job for be, be essentially taking chicken shit and making it into chicken salad. He did the best he could. Um, and I'm pretty sure the cameo roles, they were a nice little touch just to get you know, older fans to go watch it, but it really did not save the movie. Hell, you even killed off Bill Murray and essentially I felt was a very screw you way to the audience because you had this dude dressed up as, damn it, what he, he, he and it's funny because he had dressed up in a way like I've seen that manner of mannerism and that fashion set before somewhere. I cannot pinpoint the person, but I felt like it was a whole fuck you to the audience by giving him that persona and then killing him off as such, being this kind of like, atheist, oh, ghosts don't exist type of guy. I know I've seen that somewhere. But that mistake was going in there with his personal bias. Now, granted, I when I told people that I watched the movie and they asked if I recommend, uh, if I recommend it or not, I used to tell people, I have to be honest, I hated that movie before it even came out. So make what you will of my reaction, make what you will, will of my um review or opinions of it what you will because i'm already going in there with some kind of level of bias if i tell you it's a shit movie and it turns out you end up liking it afterwards okay i can't knock you for liking it that's you that's you. you're a human being you're like welcome to like shit we wouldn't be existing as human beings right now if we all like the same thing that's what you know so whatever right that's okay with me that's uh, after a while whatever so you went into this with a bias, but then you're telling me that you go into these movies already with a bias, and you, it's kind of like you were going to give that movie a low rating anyways. So, 
I don't understand how you can use that as justification. That almost that's very disingenuous because that's not giving a fair review. You're not even giving it a chance to stand on its own. You're, you're basically saying the movie could be 100%. It could be perfect in a very more like objective sense. Like acting was good. Well, I don't know how you can judge most acting, but whatever. Acting is good. Maybe um, elements, uh, graphics are good, whatever, right? CGI was great. Everything uh, floats smoothly. Oh, but because I'm afraid of spiders, I have to give this movie a low grading. How do you justify that? <clears throat> well, no. hey, I'm a, I want to interject. I don't know if, if I don't know if, if justifying it is is I don't know if that's a fair question. But one of the things that Eddie did say that I found interesting on I forget which movie it was where he said that the character was written poorly but the actress did well with that character. Um, that mindset is actually very similar to what I had when I watched, and when I still watch it again, The Strip Club Massacre. You know, knowing the behind the scenes a bit, knowing that this is a low budget, almost like a community theater production, it was enjoyable. Yeah, there were some things that, that yep. the, the, the writing was needed to be... Um, shored up there were a couple scenes that really needed to be edited better there was uh, one in fact where nick edited very well and built up this tension and the lines were correct for the ne when the scene continued but the actress was just horrific at delivering them uh it's similar to what reality's frank said yesterday with manos the hand of, of man manos the hand of fate is that yeah yes you know, it's an enjoyable movie because of the effort. You know, it was done on a dare, done with very horrible, probably eight millimeter equipment. Um, so, I, I think there's, I, I kind of, I, I'm kind of getting both sides here, understanding because I can understand if you have a fear of spiders, you might rate a movie lower because of that. But to be yeah. fair to what <clears throat> LP is saying. Part of that is to remove that yourself out of that fear, and how is the movie itself? You know, can you okay, see the, well, can you see the, the 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 spiders and you know, do you see the strings dangling and is it a horrible special effects and it just is, is a farce of a movie, or well, is it your fear that's overriding what might be there? Hold on, can I at least uh, um, tell you about um, one giant spider movie that I thought is pretty decent but still gave a low rating to? Like if you like I, I like like. I'd give it two stars, but I, but I still gave it a half. But I, but it, it has some enjoyable elements about it. Okay, go ahead. No, that's fine. Um, Eight Legged Freaks. The, um, I think it's a funny movie, and I like um, what's that's David Arquette. I remember and Scar and, and Young Scarlett Johansson. But yeah, I like I like I thought it was funny. I still don't like the the jumping spider scene scares the crap out of me. That is what traumatized me of spiders as a young child. I will give you this. That movie I find enjoyable because it's not really that great. It's not really like a, what I would consider a decent movie. Like, if anything, it's just a, a guilty pleasure of mine, really. Like, yeah, I'll watch that, it I, I, it, like, it. Like, uh, I, I understand when people say it's their guilty pleasure movie. I'm like, all right. Yeah. I, to me, I have a lot of guilty pleasures. I rec again, I, I could probably name a few off the top of my head, and everybody will probably think differently of me for me for it. And that's fine. I, look again, I haven't seen every movie that's out there, and there's a lot that I want to put on my that are on my bucket list, mind you. And um, I hope to one day see them. And yeah, well, maybe I'll get that opportunity sooner than later. I don't know. It, uh, Liquid. I have yeah. a book right um, right behind me. Um, it's. Hold on. Five stars. How to become a film critic? The world's greatest job. There, there's a part in the book where it says you you can't like a lot of movies that you watch. So before I before I bought this book, I would just see movies that I would love or people would recommend to me. But now I do the exact opposite. Now I just watch films I know I will hate. And sometimes I'll, I'll and sometimes I'll catch some stuff I do love, but mostly I review films that I know I'm gonna I'm gonna are, are going to be terrible because I've already seen because I feel like I've seen a lot of great films and I know I'm gonna see more so I'm 
trying to balance that with what he said in the book. Don't watch, uh, l- just make sure you have a good amount. Don't love too much, don't hate too much. Like, y- 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 you know what I'm saying? No, it's, okay. it's kind of like what uh, Brain Muffin was saying. You kind of have to, in a sense, take yourself out of that equation and look at it from there. Like I said, it's kind of hard because this is one of the reasons why I don't get into reviewing and I plan on probably not doing that for a very long time because I know I have a personal bias with a lot of things. And it's not necessarily maybe against the series itself. It might be against, um, like, let's say, for example, with Marvel right now, I unfortunately do have a bias against Marvel Comics because of the way Marvel did a really shitty job of not only writing their comics, but also a really shitty job of trying to do this whole not so so much the diversity thing, but the inclusivity thing, like where they're trying to appeal to everybody. Again, you can't appeal to you can't make something that'll appeal to everybody. That's not how. Um, it's not really how, like this works. This it, it, you you have this why different products exist for different people. Um, for example, something I may like, you may hate. Uh, there's merchandise I buy. There's movies I enjoy. That's why I will go watch those. Like, for example, if, like, let's say they were to come out with a Die Hard 6, right? And I'm only saying that because I just randomly went back to a page and saw Die Hard. Let's say they would come out with Die Hard 6, right? The one thing I want from a Die Hard movie is freaking Bruce Willis doing what Bruce Willis does best. Action scenes, shooting people, over-the-top situations that no normal human being would be able to do on their own. No, and, and no normal human being that ain't like a Superman type of guy, a person, whatever, or Spider-Man. That's what I mean. Like, I wouldn't want to go into a Die Hard movie when all of a sudden they're trying to appeal to, like, let's say, like, rad feminists and try to, like, include a strong female character just because they need to meet a quota. So it's it's one of those things where... Like, for example, Marvel Comics, they lost me a long time ago. Like, it's that bias that now doesn't make me want to pick up a Marvel comic, period. If anything, um, I know we were going to bring this up at one point. I guess it's uh, now time to bring it up now also. Uh, you guys been um, checking out that channel, Diversity in Comics? Yes. Oh, yeah, I yes. have. Um, he was talking about, and this was a very interesting comic, actually. And I haven't seen it in stores because it actually sold out here in the city. And rightfully so, it makes sense why. That DC recently released the uh, Batman vs. Elmer Fudd. You guys heard about that one? No. Yep. And basically what it was, was going back to this conversation we had earlier about Marvel Comics and how they had a little fun with them, with their um, with their product, Marvel, back Zombies. Marvel Zombies. They DC said, you know what, fuck it. Marvel, look at what Marvel's doing right now. We could literally create anything as a joke, and it will sell. Sure enough, word of mouth got out with this comic, um, Batman vs. Elmer Fudd, and I'm pretty sure part of it might be because of diversity in comics, because I know people... Like, I never heard of that until it was uh, I, I checked out that channel. Um, to the point that when I found out that when that video was made, I still had an opportunity to buy that comic. I didn't, and then when I went back a week later after that video came out, um, it was sold out. I'm not saying it's responsible, but what I'm getting at is that word of mouth got out. Hey, look, this is actually pretty entertaining, and it's not what you think it is. It's actually so absurd that it's well done, and people weren't buying that that comic. Now I'm, the only way I can actually find a copy of it is if I read it online. All right. Um, can I just say something here, Eddie? I used to write reviews quite often and i'd like to give you some advice from my experience first of all mm-hmm. throw out that book because it is <laughs> throw I, don't know, that book. I don't know who wrote that book or what their background christopher is no. oh? christopher no okay i don't give a shit Damn. They are giving, you are being you are you are following bad advice the best advice I could give you as far as training yourself into being a reviewer is watch other reviewers. Watch the kind of things that they do. Watch how they have made up their own style of review. Look at yeah, the, the kind of yeah, things they I'm, choose. I'm, 
I'm, I'm, I don't like Chris Stuckman or Jeremy Johns or the or the or those Collider people. You don't well, have I'm to. Saying I'm them, saying like, them. Not, not anybody particular. It's like just view the field. Like I, when I first got into reviews, I was watching this other critic back in the old days before, you know, he got too commercial. I was watching Spoon. I was watching Cinema Snob. I was watching all these guys and seeing a variety of different styles. And I developed my own style. I specialized in reviewing bad movies because that's where my interest lay. I didn't, excuse me, I didn't uh, assign arbitrary ratings to these movies. I just wrote about what happened in the movie and what I thought of it. And at the end, I'm like, check this out on these values, on the fact that it's so goofy or this actor is so entertaining or the fact that these um, special effects are so cheesy and worth a watch. You know, don't just say, I watch all these movies and I give it a star rating because that's how because that's how I remembered it or however you choose to assign these ratings. So don't watch something with the purpose of being contrary or give a rating because of how it made you feel as a kid. Best to sit down and really think about it. Yeah. I give it some time. Yeah. Okay. That sounds pretty fair. I mean, I'm yeah. not trying to be over the head with it with your choices. I mean, we did a little bit yesterday because we were on it was funny. You, but I'm, out of the out of the, you looked at my five stars and my four and a half and my fours. Do you do, do you like most of them or some of them at least? I just honestly, just... I I couldn't bring myself to look at those lists. I was already pretty much crushed <laughs> from yesterday. The point is, I don't want to discourage you because Brian? I wouldn't I wouldn't have wanted to be <laughs> been discouraged when I was getting into reviews, and not all of my went over so well some went over very well you know you gotta try different things and see what works you gotta develop like i said you gotta develop a style you've gotta watch you gotta review the movies that leave an impact with you something that speaks to you like i could be i could have spent all my time reviewing all the latest things that just came out and it's like being pissed off all the shit but like no this movie came out like 1983. It starred, you know, whoever and had shitty special effects. Or, you know, today I'm talking about Batman from 1966 and how goofy Cesar Romero's mustache is. You know, it's like yeah. inject some humor into your reviews. Don't just like, I saw this movie. I like this actor. Five stars. Yeah. And I've read some of your reviews um, before, too, and some of them, and it's not an easy uh, thing to do because, you know, some of it you're trying to, as objectively as possible, look at a movie, and then other times it's just, you know, let's let's take the Wonder Woman movie. I hope I... I Okay, so let's take the Wonder Woman movie. I know they everybody's had a lot of fun at my expense, and this is my own fault for... Being really critical of of Gal and her or Gal Gadot in her lack of any kind of physique that should be Wonder Woman, the criticism in some ways is fair because that the comic Wonder Woman has some physical characteristics that aren't in the movie. Now, granted, the comic book character is far beefier and you know there's a lot of disproportionate there, but the movie itself from a cinematic standpoint, was actually pretty good. But from a story standpoint, she's not the hero of the movie. Chris Pine's character, Steve Trevor, is the hero. He finds the plans. He figures out what's going on. He gets her, he you know, stumbles across her, basically, gets her off the end. Yes, she saves him a couple times um, from the baddies, but and then he does the self-sacrifice at the end that actually saves people. Because Ares is not creating these wars, so her defeating Ares is really, it's not even material to the movie. You could take that out, and it's the exact same movie. Uh, so that is a, is a critique where it's like, wait a minute, is this a Wonder Woman movie, or is this a Steve Trevor, woman, wo- wo- Trevor movie featuring Wonder Woman? 
Mm. And so many people were caught up in the, oh, the all-girl crew and the all-girl movie and all, you know, first feature, you know, superhero movie with a woman. And you can put starring in air quotes just because the movie itself did not have Wonder Woman being the hero. And, um, you know, she gets, she becomes Wonder Woman through anger, not through love. Uh, she gets really pissed off. It's when her powers come out. It's almost it's somewhat similar to when Luke defeats Darth Vader. He gets kind of upset, but then he pulls back. But from that standpoint, I was very deflated by the movie because she was not the hero. And I was like, oh, you know, this isn't a female-led superhero movie. This is a male-led superhero movie that happens to have a hot, you know, good-looking chick in it. And that's that's more objective. You know, I mean, I went in, I did see some. The programming was there. It wasn't anywhere near as heavy-handed as some of the other movies. But you know, some of that third-wave crap was in there. But it was very subtle. Um, but I think my biggest disappointment was that she was not the hero of the movie. And that I was not expecting that whatsoever. So uh, I think you know kind of take all this with a grain of salt i know yesterday there was a lot of ribbing going on and part of it you know people are going to disagree with critics you know how can you like this movie this movie's a three and you you this you gave it a five or this movie's a, a five and you gave it a three or two and a half or a one star or whatever but part of that as frank is saying part of that churn is to start to be able to look at movies a little bit more objectively um and say okay here's some good points here's some good points and then over time, what you'll do is you'll develop your own system that says, what does your matrix look like of what parts do you put, you weigh heavier, you know, do you weigh the cinematography heavier than the dialogue or the acting heavier than the action or whatever. Um, and that way you're encompassing the movie. You're looking at more uh, a broader stroke of what's going on. Uh, but then you can still personalize it. It's not a book report, right? But you can still personalize it about the things that you felt or observed or maybe yep. connected with other movies or connected with the, you know genres or whatever. And then your personality will flow through this objective review. Uh, Brian, isn't the, the point of movies to feel something? I mean, because I, I know I've watched a couple of movies where I felt something. Well, yeah, so yeah. have I. <laughs> Well, Likewise. yeah, yeah. So, so you got, yeah, you can take that context in any way you want. I don't know about feeling. I think part of it is what is the movie for? Is this the, a movie that's trying to pro project social change? Is this a documentary? Is this just pure popcorn entertainment, where it's you know it's just there for two hours for you to shove popcorn and coke in your face, and if you had a good time, then it's a good movie. If you were bored out of your mind, it's not. I think this is why Batman v Superman gets a lot of. You know, it's a it's a mediocre movie. I'm not going to excuse it, but a lot of what the hate that it gets is because it's not a popcorn movie. But that's what was presented, and it's really a philosophical discussion, and it and it um, and it gets too heavy handed with that. And then it's like, oh crap, we need to throw punches. Yeah, we forgot to add that in, as opposed to remove get the philosophicalness uh, as a higher level. Don't get so bogged down in the details of am I good? Am I you know who's bad? Who's good? And what does it mean to be good? And what does it mean to be you know we have this Superman as this almost Christ-like figure and blah blah blah. It really gets bogged down in that crap. Uh, it, yeah, it's it's still a comic book movie. It's not going to be a philosophical discussion. One that was actually pretty interesting. This is back in the '80s. Enemy Mine is probably a movie you haven't seen. Um, it is it is worth checking out. It was a sci-fi movie. Uh, a lot of people didn't like it because it, it was it was it is slow because it's these two, two an alien and a human that have crash landed. They're at war. Oh, and they have to figure out how to get along with each Wait other. Wait a minute, I know what you're talking. It's called Enemies. Um, dang it, I just saw it. Yeah, this is Enemy Mine. Lewis Gossett Jr. and I forget. Yeah, Enemy Mine. Yeah. I saw that. Now, yeah, the, it's based on a true story, actually. Right, so the subtext of that movie is that the aliens are played by black actors, and the most of the humans are white actors. And, but uh, it's not heavy-handed. It's not a heavy-handed heavy social con commentary. It does talk about 
these relations of learning to to like each other because you're learning from each other and they're necessary for survival and um you know it's i don't want to uh, spoil it but it is i mean it, there are some times that it's slow and everything else but it is a social commentary movie in the context of a sci-fi movie but it's it's uh it is entertaining it's not star wars it's not star trek it yeah, that's the, that's the problem. I went in going thinking that this is going to be some space battle movie. Right. But if you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, no, I have seen it. Okay. So, yeah. And, but that's a, that's what an example what I'm talking about where if you just look at it at the, at the surface of, oh, this is a mediocre sci-fi movie, which it is. It's a little cheesy from time to time. But underneath is a little bit deeper story. That I thought it was pretty decent. Me. So, you know, there, I don't know if it's supposed to make you feel anything or think. I think it's more of a thought-provoking, hey, you know, maybe I should just prejudge people because I don't really know them. You know, maybe we get to know each other. Maybe we still hate each other, but maybe we like each other. So, anyway. But I think Frank's right that part of it is finding your voice. Um, I would definitely have somebody go over and maybe perhaps do some light editing on your written reviews. Um I mean, there's just basic grammar and run-on sentences and stuff like that 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 you'd want to clean up, so that you start to be taken a little bit more seriously. Uh, it doesn't. It don't have to look like you swallowed a, a grammar book and barfed it all over the web page, but just some general pieces. You know, I mean, I'm not going to dock you on co comma splices and things like that. I mean, that's really getting heavy. That's you know, dangling participles. That's more advanced, but just simple. You know. Um, I wouldn't say simple, but you know, medium level grammar pieces just to kind of clean up some things. Makes sometimes it's I was, I was a little unclear what you were trying to say, and somebody just reading that and saying, "What do you mean here?" and you explaining can help you write that couple sentences a little bit better. Um, so anyway, I didn't know we were going to turn this into uh, uh, learning time, but I think that's good. I mean, maybe it's good we had a low energy thing because we we able to think about these things, but. And that's part of it, too, yep. is understanding, okay, you give a movie a five, why is that? And someone who you know, disagrees, you want to be able to have that conversation and debate, not argument, of what have you thought about, the, here's why I have a five, this, 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 and this. And then somebody may, someone may still disagree with your number, but they may start to appreciate the context that you gave the number. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Now, I want to say something, uh, Eddie. I'm gonna, not to browbeat you any further. I don't mean to do this to you, but uh, I read some of the other. I just looked up like a random movie. I looked up Taken. I looked up some of the other random reviews. I know I gave you a lot of shit not that long ago, but there are some reviews here that are just like. Well, can I at least yours um, were questionable? No, no. I'm saying what I'm trying to say is I thought yours were questionable. I'm looking for example what Taken. There's a half star rating that one person gave, and uh, you guys want me to read it out? Sure. Uh, all right, so this is uh, written by some, uh, reviewed by Jonathan White. I'm guessing uh, he apparently is a patron in the, I guess, his website. So he watched the December 27, 2014. So you know, this is an old rating. Um, movie came out uh, way before that. So take it, right? This is how he goes. And uh, I'm going to read it as is. In all caps, WTF. Then goes back to normal um grammar whiny daughter wants a pony pulls a hissy because she don't get her own way lies to get her own way rich ex-wife lays on guilt supports daughter lying to get her own way ominous da 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 you've got to be careful in paris bimbo girlfriend who Im i immediately want to slap taken at the first opportunity oh, i saw what he did there baddies everywhere great message to young woman wanted to travel abroad Murder, torture, um, in parentheses, which, BTW, I'll just keep you in a state of continuous torture flippantly because I think that's what you deserve, uh, in parentheses, is perfectly okay. Oh, of course, in the end, it's an Arab's fault, because that's popular. And then, uh, Treacle, all is ending well, now daughter loves dad. Oh, and that can give her something that rich mom and stepdad can't. Y'all yeah, know it's still a thing in parent. I'm guessing parentheses. Um, 
Liam, I expected better from you. You're getting a bit old for this kind of stuff, don't you think? That die job was pretty obvious, and it has 92 likes. Wow. That's how it's yeah, written? I, that is... Uh, yes. uh, what? Hold on, hold on. Me, I are uh, smart sure after is. listening to that. Well, I think like, brain I, cells wow. died just listening to that thing. I'm going to send it to you guys right now in chat. And uh, I know I gave you shit just now, Eddie, but... Uh, and I didn't mean to, by the way. It just kind of came off like that. I really do not mean to like discourage you from what you're doing. If anything, I would say follow their advice because if anything, they've had uh, these guys give possibly the best advice you could ever appreciate ever. Believe me, uh, they've given me advice on things before, and believe me, I've done my best to try to prove myself. Uh, I still have my faults, but yeah, who doesn't? So uh, I would suggest that. Um, but goddamn, I saw this review and uh, and the fact that it says watch December twenty seventh, two thousand fourteen is more telling. Because I feel like this is such a dated review. Like, I don't know if this person understands, first of all, when the movie was made. I was still in college when this movie was made, and that was sometime before... Uh, I was I, in middle school. I was, let me see, I graduated in college sometime in uh, 2011, I believe. So, I know it was a few years there. So, I, I don't remember the, oh, it's 2008, it's right there in front of me, too. What the fuck is wrong with me? It's actually one of the few movies I actually uh, may have not seen in theaters or DVD, by the way, um, when it first came out. And uh, the whole thing about the movie was like, I don't know if this person is being serious or they're trolling, what the case may be. Maybe. Yeah, Lord, I hope he's not serious. <laughs> you read it, right? <laughs> no, just and, after hearing you, it's like, wow. Like, I had to read it just like that because I think that's the way you would read this. It's, it's, again, um, I don't understand. I'm hoping this is a troll. I'm hoping this is somebody who just purposely gives bad reviews and shits on the movies. And this is, like, his thing. But he doesn't actually feel that way. Like, it's just a character. But if he's being serious, um... Wow, this is just terrible. I don't know what to say. All right. Uh, I was going to mention some of my, some of my, I think, best written stuff, if you don't mind. Well, I don't mind, but let's see if we, you know, we're going past two hours here, so let's see if we can uh, start wrapping this series up. You know uh, what? You can just send it to me in chat, and I'll take a look at it, and... Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Exactly yeah, let's... Next let's, let's Let's take it offline, as they say. Yeah, and, yep. and we'll uh, uh, we'll talk about it some more later. Okay. Because yeah, we've been at this like forty minutes. I still want to ask though. Did, uh, did you even like some of the four things I gave, like four stars, four and a half, and fives? Oh Again. yeah. Oh yeah. There were a, a bunch of them I agreed with, and then some of them I'm like, what? But. Um, yeah. Because I because I know I, cause I remember yesterday uh, uh, half of those things were like what? Well, yeah, there was that in the people, but there was some that we were agreeing with. I think the the thing we got on yesterday was all the movies you haven't seen. Um, now, granted, a yeah, lot of them are well before your time, and we're talking probably some of those were twenty, thirty. I mean, good grief, the Marx Brothers before my time. Tell them my dad wasn't born when some of those movies came out. But the idea Damn. is to, is to get. Really, go look at some of those classic movies that are are well made, well written. Um, yeah, Hollywood for years they had uh, you know each movie studio had their actors, and the same actors appeared in movies over and over and over again. But they had a really good uh, writing. It was these things weren't. Well, I mean, yes, they still threw movies together. A lot of Three Stooges movies are that way because actors dying and different things like that. But um, you know, there's a grandeur, especially like, you know, and understand the context. If you watch a Marx Brothers movie and don't understand that they're really spoofing Hollywood musicals, then you're going to be like, why in the freak are they singing? Because it makes no sense. Why is there a dance number with Groucho? Because Hollywood's producing those types of movies and they were spoofing them. So some of it's to understand that the historical context and, and um, a lot of movies came from theater, so there's, all, there's decades of musicals. Now we make a musical like La La Land, you rated pretty well. That's a rarity. 
Uh, now, will the new Mary Poppins movie be a musical too, like the one in the sixties? I don't know, but um, I hope you know that's part of it is understanding some of the history and and the. the and I'm not saying you need to know how to make a movie, uh, but just kind yeah, of yeah. The uh, funny thing, um, th I'm glad you mentioned that. I it, in the book I just told you guys about um, earlier, it said. Um, Take some film classes if if you so feel the need to. And so I went to a film production class. I failed. Did Why did you feel a need to do that? Honestly, it was just so I could learn how to use the camera. Okay. Um, All right, I guess. Learning to use the camera is actually... Uh, Nick or I could teach you that in 10 minutes because that's science. It's easy. Understanding depth of field and aperture and all that other stuff, it is really mathematically based. It's not too difficult. Uh, if you really, really want a great depth of field um, um, tutorial. I'm going to go going, back and yeah. I, I'm going to try and go back when I, if I can but uh, to, to take film appreciation. Right. The Snap Chick on YouTube has a great one. There's boobs. It's everything. It's great. Um, but that's the science part. The art is knowing when to use those techniques. And that is a lifetime of experimentation and failure and learning and success. So, and my professor, and I remember my professor did say, um, the, the, the I, I feel the best way, Eddie, that, that, uh, for, to, for you to become a better critic is that it, it, if you want to, if you want to write better reviews about movies, you should learn how to make a movie. Yeah, I don't know. I would say really? read better reviews. It's like when you want to become an author and you want to write well, you need to read well first. I don't know if making a movie... I think understanding how movies are made and, and maybe understanding why certain things are done the way they are. But making one, that's... You know, Leonard Maltin and Siskel and Ebert, I don't think they could make a movie. Well, I know some of them are dead, but let's say when they were alive... Gene Shalit, but they have a good technique for critiquing movies. So, looking to see what their background's like, but anyway. Um, so, are we wrapped up, or... I mean, we can continue after recording, but, I mean, we've been going for quite a while at this. Uh, I just kind of wanted to run, run its course. I think Kendo fell asleep. No, I'm still here. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on, Kendo. You got any words for me? I'm just I'm just interested. No. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty fucking quick. I I don't really put a whole lot of stock stock in film critics anyway. They're like, this movie was terrible. You shouldn't see it. It's like I probably should see it then, because <laughs> I'm not an art fag. All right. Nick would be proud. So if we're wrapped up, Mr. Kendo slices up with the BBC. Yes, this week's uh, big, beautiful chess nominee needs no introduction nor any deliberation on whether or not she should be included. It's Kate Upton. Oh, yeah. Agree. So I figured that'd be real easy to take care of. The eyes have it. All right. So I don't have any more things. We have a monster fight assignment for next week. Royal um, Rumble, ladies and gentlemen. Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. Um... As uh, Lillian Garcia used to call it, the Royal Wumble. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Justin, what do you think of, uh, well, Justin and Eddie both, a uh, guest appearance uh, on the fan cast. So, so what do you, this was kind of one of our more, more low-keyed, uh, more educational, uh, despite the thumbnail that I'm working on, uh, episodes. <laughs> Does that mean we're clickbaiting now? No. Damn it! I hope not. Get there. <laughs> well, we don't make money off of this anyway, so right. it's not. Yeah. Well, we gotta get more than fifty yeah. views before we worry about monetize. Yeah, we're not clickbaiting just the same as Emma Stone doesn't always show up. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Be, oh, the first yeah, movie I thought I saw it was her pretty name good. Was super bad. But uh, I'll put I'll put the link that we all shared with one another to uh, Eddie's uh, reviews in the description, 
unless he decides he doesn't want to. So listeners, a handful of you out there, get some feedback. This, this guy wants to do this full time someday. So, you know, constructive criticism is basically what we're after. Um, listen to episode 83 if you want to hear the guys really gang up on him for uh, over an hour. It is entertaining. But uh, anyway, it was, it was alcohol fueled, which I think helped. A little heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's why it's kind of low key right now. There's less alcohol. No alcohol. Everybody's tired. Yeah, people were up till like three or four in the morning, something like that. Maybe later. Um, Kendo being one of them. All right. Anybody have anything else no. they want to plug or chug? Uh, oh my god, damn t-shirt. So, yeah, support <laughs> the show. Go to the yeah. and remember the fucking hyphen and buy a damn t-shirt. Yeah, support it's the show. <laughs> support them on Patreon. Uh, have a good day, and uh, world class BS at mail. I'm all over the place. Yeah, the all best right, mail. I want to support say one the last thing before we go. Support go the ahead. show. Go ahead. Not your father's clitoris challenge. Wherever you are, please come back. Him and uh, Dyke Cuckerberg, they have gone. <laughs> Or I'm assuming a he. They have gone uh, AWOL for quite some time. I was actually looking oh, for Dyke Tuckerberg wait. comments. I couldn't find any. Did you oh, wait, hold on. Here? No, I think I got one more thing. Um, Augs, if you're listening, hope you're uh, here the next time. Yeah. Uh, Augs is going to be busy with school for the foreseeable future. Yeah. School starting That's soon, or has. But yep. It's important, so. I know in Atlanta it started. All right. Oh, save the future, please. We will put in the in the description. We'll have all the links to Patreon, to the T-shirts, and everything else. Uh, if you find me over on with my channel, Brian Leap, I, you'll see some of the T-shirts in action on my reviews. Uh, they're good quality, heavy T-shirts. They're not cheap, and um, Jeff works pretty hard at creating those. The artwork that goes on the front of them, they're very good. All right, I have been your host, Brain Muffin. And with me has been Kendo Slice. Peace out, Girl Scout. <laughs> Liquid Metal Pro. Uh, did anybody see those flashing lights outside my window? <laughs> Eddie Cantillo. Jiggy fucking woohoo. Reality's Frank. Don't just review anything. Review something that means something to you. And the one they only, Justin B. I'm here. All right. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Good night and sleep tight.